so we're underway with our afternoon session now, the women's B800 meters in association with TripAdvisor and the 800 sponsored by TripAdvisor. So, for a B800, they're not going to hang about. They're going to try and go through with the pacemaker, which will be Rachel McCann in 61 seconds. So keep an eye out for Saoirse Fitzgerald on the inside from Luke and Harriers. We've seen her run a good few indoor 400s this year, homing in on the speed. She's a juvenile high jump champion. She's a cross-country champion, 800-meter champion. Um, qualified for the Youth Olympics last year. Didn't race them, but really top-class juvenile. Lucy Holmes then. Outside her, so we're away. And then Warry Henry and Olivia Varel, both low two minute athletes. So we're underway, so we're looking for Rachel McCann to get herself to the front. We saw her run the individual 400 earlier on there, she was second. So she's looking to bring them through in. 61, probably a little bit fast through the first 200, 29 seconds through the first 200. Victoria Park City of Glasgow is very club, we're in 2 3 2. Jill Cherry is in set, same club, we're in 2 3 come round field well, strung out in the very early stages. So hopefully we can see the pacemakers maybe going to 5, 600 with some of these guys. So Hannah Cameron from Aberdeen leads them out from Jill Cherry from Victoria Park, City of Glasgow. 61 away, so bang on as Rachel steps off the track. So it's Hannah Cameron from Jill Cherry, and they're beginning to move away from the rest of the field here. Through 500, 115, 116. And look at this now, this really driving down that back straight, but she just can't shake off Jill Cherry so it's Hannah Cameron from Aberdeen with Jill Cherry now just coming right up onto her shoulder at 131 through 600 and this is a B800 they've opened up big gap here now Susie Nestor from UCDAC in third place and then Saoirse Fitzgerald from Luke and Harriers in four but Jill Cherry from Victoria Park City of Glasgow now comes out wide onto Hannah Cameron from Aberdeen the two of them side by side but she hasn't got the lead yet. It's been a great response from Hannah Cameron. And Hannah Cameron looks as though she's going to take this now. The legs are dead for both of them. So she takes that in 2.04 from Jill Cherry, Susie Nestor. And then a very fast finish in Lucy Holmes for Saoirse Fitzgerald. So that last 100 metres hurt so badly. There were 131 through 600 metres. I came home in a 33, but the gap was too big. Susie Nestor just couldn't get back at them. So Hannah Cameron, 204.28, first time breaking 205. She'll be delighted. So we expect all the times to be up probably on the Irish Milers or Eamon Christie's Twitter page. So keep an eye out on social media for the official times. So the sun really starting to come out here now in Mary Peters. We have the men's C 3000 metres coming up now pretty shortly. They're over the far side of the track, getting themselves ready. So it's amazing 
the amount of scrambling athletes have had to do to try and get into this race meet today. Eamon Christie's been at a waiting list. People promised them everything to try and get themselves in. And then, as always happens, you do get a few withdrawals and people get last minute calls up and everyone just takes that chance. So hopefully now this C3000 will be a good one. We have a class A3000 coming up later on in the day. We expect to go into the 7.30s, hopefully. 7.40s, anyway. It's Irish distance athletics in a really good space at the minute. Anyone saw Brian Fay beat Charles Hicks last night over in the US, over 10,000 metres with a 54 second last. 400 metres. Big, big scalp for him. Charles Hicks, the NCAA cross country champion, several times NCAA champion, and Brian Fay putting it up to him last night in a brilliant race if you get to see it on, on social media. So 10 past 1 were due to be underway with the men's C 3000 metres. So a few more minutes. If Susie Nestor, Hannah Cameron and Jill Cherry could come to the finish line, folks, we're going to do the presentation for that race. Sponsored by Ireland Wealth and Richard Gavin here to do the presentation. So Susie Nestor, Jill Cherry and Hannah Cameron, if you could make your way to the finish line. The athletes have been called in for that medal presentation for the women's 800 metres, but the official times, Hannah Cameron took it in 2.04.32. Jill Cherry was second in 2.04.70. Susie Nestor, 2.06.41 in third. Lucy Holmes will be well happy with 2.08.50. Saoirse Fitzgerald, the under 18 athlete, or 17 athlete, 2.09.42, so under 2.10 again. Neve Carr breaking the 210-209-60. Olivia Varel from Falkirk, 210-32. And then Wari Hendry in 211-61. Earlier on in the B women's 400 metres, Holly Kilroe with a personal best of 56-55 from Suck Valley took that. And then we had Rachel McCann who paced that first 800 metres she was second in 57 seconds flat. Amy Jo Kearns with 57.24. So here, sipping my coffee from Cafe O. Very nice indeed. As we await the athletes to get called to the line in the C 3000 metres. So most of these athletes have run in around the 8.45 marks. So they'll be looking to run in the low 8.40s, high 8.30s if they can. Richard Gavin here is sponsoring. 
So Ardent Weld, the sponsors of the place. women's B800 meters and the medal presentation there for that. So big PB for Susie Nestor from UCD. Taking third, very strong finish. Well clear in third there. So coached by James Nolan. And then a PB then for Jill Cherry from Victoria Park, City of Glasgow in 204.70. And then 204.32, the champion from Aberdeen is Hannah Cameron. So the athletes are being called to the line as we speak in the first of our three men's 3,000 metres. So Pierre Merchant, who ran for Ireland in the Turin in the European Cross Country, is going to pace them through in 70s. So pace making being done at 8.45 pace. So where we go, our first of our three, 3,000 metres. Now you can see Pierre Martian right on the outside there. He comes into the home straight, then they'll just all verge towards the inside. So it looks like Lucas Cairns from Inverness. So it's the two Scottish athletes, Lucas and Angus, Lucas Cairns and Angus Smith, leading them out. Then tucked in behind them is Luke Kelly from Kandar Track Club. So we'll see the Rodrigo go through in 70, so it looks as though they're pretty bang on there. That's a 69 seconds. So we'll see how far Pierre will take them. So the field, well strung out. Probably 25, 30 metres between the probably 20 athletes. So we just see Brandon McKeown then just making his way up through the field there. So he just sits in behind the two Inverness Harriers, Lucas Cairns and Angus Smith. So he's moved into third in the race. Then Luke Kelly from Kander Track Club, who has an 8.45, so be well familiar to this pace. Jack McCausland there just making his way through. So just track those leaders from City of Lisburn. So well, well bunched together here. Just happy to let Pierre dictate the pace. He's a little bit slower there. That was 221, 222, so he probably ran a 72 second lap there. And we can just see Lucas Cairns just coming up right onto the shoulder to Pierre to tell him, just clip it along there a little bit faster, will you? 
So Brandon McKeown in the famous Annadale Strider singlet in behind him. Jack McCausland. John Dorkin from Toker is right there as well. So let's hope Pierre will take them for a long way around here. It should be very easy pace for him. So down the back straight, past the on-running merchandise. And now they're just beginning to get a little bit strung out. So it's the two Inverness Harrier athletes have gone with Pierre Merchant. He goes through there in 3.30. So he would have stepped that up to a 68, 69 to get them bang on pace. So John Durkin from Toker now just trying to make sure that gap doesn't open up. That feel now beginning to get well strung out. into the home straight now. Four laps left in this men's 3K. Here super so it's Lucas Cairns leading them out. James Monaghan from St. Peter's. Peter's. And then we have Monaghan John Durkin from Toker. And, and then John we have Durkin Angus Smith from, from Inverness, from Luke Kelly Peter's from Kander Track Club. And then Mullingar Harriers, Ewan Lagan. And as usual, Eamon Christie has arranged for the international to have this beautiful sunshine. Those so are coming up to 1600 here, around the mile we when we go past the 200 the meter mark. And um, it's actually got a little bit faster. So Pierre's gone through in 437, 438. So obviously Lucas Cairns feels good, has probably asked Pierre to push it on a little bit more. So James Monaghan then from St. Peter's leads out that chasing group with John Durkin from Tokar in behind him. But it's Lucas Cairns who's beginning to pull away from the rest of the field. Pierre doing a great job here. Lucas happy to sit in behind. Luke Kelly from Canada Track Club now just comes up onto the shoulder of James Monaghan in second and third in the race. There's a good battle between those five athletes with the other Inverness Harriers athlete, Angus Smith, just at the back of that group. But Lucas Cairns looks really comfortable here. Lovely, bouncy stride. Looks really, really fresh. Luke Kelly from Cander is looking to try and close that gap now. He has a little look at his watch as well. But the pace, we were expecting around 5.50. That's the pace that we're supposed to go at. But they're gone through now in 5.46. And Pierre steps out at 2K. And now this could be the long, lonely two and a half lap run. Luke Kelly seems to be dragging around John Durkin maybe in behind him. So coming up with just over two laps to go. We're in the 830s, I'd say, at this stage, if Lucas can just keep this going. But great run here by Luke Kelly in second place. He looks pretty good as well, and he's dragging along John Durkin with him as well. And then Ewan Lagan from Mullingar Harriers, happy to stay on their shoulders as well. And then from St. Peter's, James Monaghan just a couple of metres off, but he's just closed that gap as well. And then it just looked that Angus Smith is just losing ground with them as well. But the gap is definitely getting closer. So a lap ago, he looked so comfortable, so bouncy and so rangy. But then when the pacemaker's gone, it's amazing how things change. So now it's John Durkin who's closing down on Lucas Cairns with every stride here. 600 metres to go. So when they come round to the bell, there could be a big change at the front here. So those couple of laps of 67, 68s now beginning to take their toll on Lucas Cairns. John Durkin from Toker comes onto his shoulder. He'll keep it going. And can Lucas respond to that? So John Durkin from Toker, Lucas Cairns in second place. Then we have Luke Kelly from Candor Track Club. Ewan Lagan from Mullingar Harriers. And then James Monaghan from St. Peter's. So they're coming up to the bell. So if they can come home in 70, it'll be just 841, 842. 
So the gap now. John Durkin has about 10 metres over Lucas Cairns, who's still at six or seven metres now over James Monaghan from St. Peter's, but that gap's closing as well. But the lead now, probably 15, 20 metres at this stage. And now James Monaghan has made a bit of a decisive move, but he is 20 metres to get back onto John Durkin from Toher. 200 metres to go, 8.05. So he's very close to the 840 here. So he has a PB down at 847. So he's going to be well inside his PB. But can he break the 840? And then look at this from Luke Kelly from Cander Track Club then. Takes on James Monaghan in second. But no doubt, this stage of the last lap, he moved into the lead. And John Durkin from Toker is going to take this. Going to be a very good run from Luke Kelly in second place. Going to be on PB shape as well. But they're going to break 840, the two of them it looks like. So John Durkin takes that 837. Luke Kelly, very happy there. He would have come home sub 840 as well. So massive PBs for the two boys. James Monaghan then in third. Good run then from Ewan Lagan. Maybe get up for fourth. So 837 25. Let's cheer on our athletes for the finish. All so we come to the end of our Siemens 3000 meters and then we'll be getting underway then with the uh, our two 200 meters the women's first followed by the men So John Durkin getting interviewed. Just down on trackside there after his 10 second PB. We can see the women just checking their blocks over at the far side as we have our women's 200 metres getting underway in the next couple of minutes. So look out for in lane four, Phil Healy stepping down the distance from our usual 400. Well, these athletes opening up their outdoor season. So what a strong women's 400 we have in Ireland at the moment. Phil Healy was dominant for a few years, dominant over 200 and 400. But now, obviously, with the emergence of Rashad Adeliki, who has brought records to a new height. But still a 22.99 PB for Phil Healy over 200. Still our national record holder over 100 with 11.28. So from the outside, we have Aaron McMahon from Lagan Valley in lane eight. In lane seven, Molly Kern from City of Lisburn. Lane six, Janine Boyle from Finn Valley. In lane five, Sarah McCarthy from Mid Sutton. Lane four, Phil Healy from Bandon AC. 
In lane three, Molly Hurrahan from Dundrum, South Dublin. In lane two, Alana Ryan from Schleekhulen. And on the inside, in lane one, we have Brianna Brenstadter from City of Lisbon. So the whistle goes. They're behind the blocks. They're going to get called into the blocks now very shortly. So Greg Campbell, women's 200 metres. All with their own routines. So it'll be great to see what sort of shape Phil Healy is in. Difficult <coughs> indoor season for her. We know the quality that she has. Sarah McCarthy on our outside and Molly Huron on her inside will try and chase her down, but all going according to plan. We should see Phil Healy well in the lead coming into that home straight. So we're away we're in the women's 200 metres, and there's head up now for Phil Healy. She has the lead, Molly Hurahan probably in second place here. Then Janine Boyle also from Finn Valley going well. But here comes Phil Healy from Bandanese. She's going to do the 400 metres later on, so she's just warming up here with this 200. But she's moving away from the field. The stamina pulls away from the field. So Phil Healy takes that 23.70 from Molly Hurahan in second place. So she gets her outdoor season underway. In the first of our two races. So in that men's C3000 metres. The top three were James Monaghan from St. Peter's who ran 840.65. In second was Luke Kelly from Candle Track Club 838.64. And the winner all the way from Toker in Cork is John Durkin who ran 837.25. So next up's the men's 200 metres, sponsored by Design and Print. So can't do these events without the sponsors. It takes a lot of money to put these events on. So great sponsor in TripAdvisor. And then a lot of support from First Point, who provides scholarships to athletes of all sports out to the US, helps them with that journey choosing university so Karen Kirk down there with her stall so we're waiting for the men's 200 metres and while we have that Sarah McCarthy was third in that 200 metres in time of 24.91 in second Molly Hurahan from Dundrum South Dublin in 24.42 and the winner with 23.70 was Phil Healy from Bandanese so the Athletes asked to stand behind their blocks. So in lane eight, we've Adam Hill from City of Lisbon. In lane seven, Arnar Brain Jarson from City of Lisbon. Lane six, Adam Murphy from Tinray Land. 
in lane five, Mark Smith from DCU, and what an indoor season he had over 200 meters. So 20. 89 indoors brought it to a whole new level rob mcdonald great to see him back he's been dogged with injury but one of our best two and 400 meter runners from Galway city harriers in four toby thompson in three from Bellamina and antrim and in lane two andrew proctor from lagan valley but should be between rob mcdonald and mark smith in lanes four and five So a great start there by Mark Smith. Closes down that stagger on Adam Murphy. All right, but inside him, Robert McDonald is there. Two of them are going to come into this home straight. So Mark Smith, the 200 metre specialist. Rob McDonald with the 400 metre stamina. And Rob McDonald's trying to close it in. But Mark Smith has it at the moment. But Rob McDonald's coming right back at him. But Mark Smith's going to take this one. Mark Smith from Rob McDonald. And then 20.70. Marks Adam Murphy then in third place from Tinryland. So 20.70, we'd be well happy with that one. So Mark Smith, he came under pressure there. Rob McDonald came right up on him, but he actually probably opened up that lead over the last 20 or 30 metres. Wasn't expecting that. I thought once Rob came up on him that he would have the stamina, that 400 metre stamina to come back at him, but it's still so early in the season. So a really good race there. So a couple of presentations now for those 200s coming up and then we'll be underway with the men's B 3000 metres in five minutes time. our women for their 200 meter medal presentation. So we are going to get our ladies presentation of the Greg Campbell sponsored 200 meters. Take a water there girls and then head over here. couple of medal presentations now and then underway with the men's B 3000 metres. We're ready for the presentation of the ladies uh, 200 metres. I got confused there because Phil is coming back for the 400 later. So we have Eamon Christie down Mid there at the medal presentation. Third place Sarah McCarthy from Mid Sutton AC 24.91. In second from Dundrum South Dublin with 24.42, Molly Hurahan. And the champion of the Greg Campbell sponsored women's 200 metres is Phil Healy from Bandon AC with a time of 23.70.
So the men's B3000 getting underway and Pierre Merchant back on pacing duties again. This time he's looking for 68s. Adam Murphy, if you make great to finish line, These guys looking to run yeah, sub 830 here. So the men's 200 meters medal presentation sponsored by Design and Print. So the 3,000 meter athletes are getting themselves into position. They'll start on both the inside and the outside, and then they'll break in the home straight. So medal presentation for the men's 200 metres from Tin Rai Land in third place was Adam Murphy with 21.72. In so great to see him back running healthy and fit again. In second place from Galway City Harriers, Rob McDonnell in 20.87. And then continuing on where he left off at the indoor season, the winner from Rohini Shamrock in a time of 20.70 is Mark Smith. So ready to go now, B men's 3,000 metres. And what a 3,000 we have later on, the A men's. Andrew Coskran against Nick Griggs. And they won't have it their own way either. So there we have Pierre Merchant again. You can see him on the outside. So a nice tempo training session for him today. And Kyle O'Reilly from Kilkenny City Harriers right on the inside. Like a Kenny City Harrier DCU We're athlete, and then Louis Wooger from Metro St. Bridget, Frank McGrath from Lagan Valley, and then Gary Crummy from Newry AC. So it's Pierre Merchant from Cahill O'Reilly, Louis Wooger, Frank McGrath, Gary Crummy. And it looks like it could be Tony McCambridge then, maybe. Is so let's see, 68s we're Nine expecting. They look to be on that or faster. So go through now in 66 seconds. So no hanging about by Pierre this time. So it's Cahill O'Reilly tucked in behind him, coached by Nolan Neve Richardson down in Kilkenny City Harriers. Then right in the inside of the famous Metro St. Bridges is Louis Wooger. Frank McGrath then in the famous Lagan Valley singlet. Gary Crummy then tucked in right in the centre of that group from New Year's One is Frank McGrath And then we have Tony McCambridge and Luke Dinsmore. So just a little bit of a gap forming there between the first six athletes and the pacemaker. Well, Carl O'Reilly's shown his intent. He went off pretty fast on the inside. So he was in the lead, then let Pierre take over and then has been in that position for the last 800 metres. So they're going through now in 2.13. So 66.67. So they're well inside the 2.16 that they've asked for. But it's not putting the guys off. They're going right on Pierre Marchand's shoulders. Beautiful weather down there. Slight bit of a breeze against you coming up the home straight. But you won't mind that over 3,000 metres. It's pretty warm down there. So it's still Carl O'Reilly, Louis Wooger, Frank McGrath. 
Tony McCambridge, Gary Crummy, and Luke Dinsmore. So it'll probably be about 320, or well inside actually 320 when they go up here. So in that group we've got what, one, two, three, four, five, seven guys looking nice and strong. So we we'll hope that Pierre can take them to 2,000 meters again. We are going to go through bang on 320 now, so averaging 67s. Well, Cahill O'Reilly is right on the heels of Pierre Merchant. Louis Wooger, only under 18, I think, having a great run there at the moment in second place. Fergal McGrath from Lagan Valley right there as well. And Tony, McCam Tony McCambridge. And then just a little bit of a gap now to Gary Crummy, probably five metres from Frank McGrath. Frank just beginning to get a little bit tailed off himself. A couple of metres off the back of Tony McCambridge. So coming up through halfway there in around 4.12. So a well sub 8.30. So coming up now to the mile go through 426 427 so another 67 it looks like there so we're keeping this pace going this is going to be really good time if we can keep it going for the next three and a half laps so great work being done by Pierre Merchant you can see the feel now that last lap has really begun to get strung out so the only ones that are seem to be able to go at the moment is Cahill O'Reilly from Dundrum South Dublin Louis Wooger and Tony McCambridge and Tony McCambridge just a couple of metres off the back of Louis Wooger And Gary Crummy now moves into fourth. Let me Frank McGrath, Luke Dinsmore. So it looks as though Pierre's taking them to 2000 again. So great pace making here. And it just seems to be down to the two younger boys. The DCU student, Carl O'Reilly, Louis Wooger then. So I think Louis only under 18, so it's, this has been a brilliant run from here. So then Pierre Merchant moves out, lets Cahill O'Reilly up the inside, and Louis Wooger right in his shoulder here. He's really putting it up to him. So national indoor champion Louis Wooger. Well, you would think that he was out of his comfort zone here, but he's not showing it. He's got an 831 PB. But he's well into the low air 20s at the minute. If these two boys can just keep this going here. So it's Cahill O'Reilly, Louis Wooger. Louis Wooger is working really hard. You can see the effort on his face there. But he's only got two laps to go. You can see the effort. So Cahill O'Reilly has just opened up a couple of metres, but he hasn't shaken off Louis Wooger, who is really working hard. Tony McCambridge looks pretty tired. Gary Crummy then in fourth place on his own as well but the field has got so strong out in that last six or eight hundred meters and now Carl O'Reilly has put three four five meters now between him and Louis Wooger but if I was to put anything on it if Louis Wooger can just stay within striking distance he has the 1500 800 meter speed Carl O'Reilly more the distance athlete but now the gap is probably eight ten meters 600 meters to go Carl O'Reilly 641 through with 600 to go, 2-4, done in 6.41. And now the gap's probably 15 metres now. So he'll come right into the home straight, come up past the finish and he'll get the bell. So then can Tony McCambridge sniff Louis Wooger beginning to struggle in behind? But they're all well strung out here, so probably 20 metres now for Carl O'Reilly. He's going to get the bell here in around 7.15, 7.16. So he's going to be the mid-8.20s by the looks of it. Louis Wooger probably on PB pace as well. And then a very tired Tony McCambridge will have to go. Gary Crummy is going to go past him now. But the lead's now probably 30 metres. So Cahill O'Reilly... He just come up the inside of Pierre Merchant about two laps to go here. 
felt very, very comfortable by the looks of it and is running really, really strongly here. He's at 7.49 with 200 metres to go. And he looks to be absolutely full of running. And they're just closing down with every stride on Louis Wooja for second place. Gary Crummy is absolutely flying here. And now in second place. But this has been a very dominant performance by Carl O'Reilly from Kilkenny City Harriers. He's tired. You can see it. He's looking down. He's struggling, but he's looking at the clock. He can see, can I get sub-820? He's going to be just outside that 820. But that's a really good run. 821. Gary Crummy comes through into second place. Luke Dinsmore from Annadale Striders in third. A very tired Louis Woodger, but he gave it a great go there. Absolutely everything. We could see him struggling with two laps to go, but managed to get across the line there in fourth. Tony McCambridge. So 8.21. Very good run there by Carl O'Reilly. Dara Crossan then from City of Derry comes up to finish and then Owen Carlton from Annadale Striders coached by race director Eamon Christie so they're all gathering over at the 1500 metre mark we have five men's 1500 metres today so we start with the E one and then that'll be followed by the A men's 1500. So Roadrunners AC men's 3000 metres goes to Cahill O'Reilly. So a couple of minutes before we get underway with the men's E 1500 metres. So great action ahead of us today. Finishes at three minutes past five with what was the event of the day last year, the A women's 800 metres. A battle between Kira McGeehan and Louise Shanahan. Irish record, two of them sub two minutes. With Alex Bell, previous year run the 158.50 here as well. So it's been a brilliant event here for women over 800 metres, Mary Peters track. We're about to move over to the 1500 meters, Don. For all athletes that are warming up on the back straight, we've no issue with you being over there in the outer lanes warming up, but please, please keep to lane, say, six, seven, eight when the races are on. We don't want you in lanes two, three, and four. It's not fair on the athletes. And we're not asking you to leave the track. We're just asking you to show courtesy to the athletes that are in the race and move out to the outer lanes. About to get the men's E, 1,500 metres underway.
62, you saw my name from Dunier, coach Mike Finch and Riley, 436 out. Kieran Toner, Belfast Running Club, is wearing 64, 64, 40 out. Logan Bell from Lagan Valley, Jim McKeown, coach, is wearing 65, 66 is Key McDonald, Balamina and Antrim. So apologies for the slight delay in getting the commentary going on this one. It's just Darren meeting Ronnie O'Sullivan and it looks like Ronnie's going to come up and help us commentate on the men's A1500 after this. We can see Jack again, he's doing a couple of pacing jobs for us. 67 is Phil Cooper. So Jack Hopkins is pacing through in 68s here. Master over 40. Jeremy Brennan from Finn Valley leads them out. Francis Marsh is in wearing number 68 from North Down. He's a 432 lad. Rhys McManus from Lagan Valley. Jim McKeown's coaching him. Number 69 is on his vest. 70 is Patrick Conlon from Crusaders AC. Coached by Michael McGovern. He's a 438. So I feel best. very well strung out in the very early stages of this men's 1500 metres. So 430. Excuse me, four so through 500 here. 72 is Chris Two, Moore, four, six, North seven of them. Him. Now group, Reese McManus from Lagan Valley. And Lorcan Bell, Luke and just at the back of that group. But it's Jeremy Brennan from Finn Valley leading them out. And it looks like it's Philip Cooper. So we can see Jack Hopkins then. He is with me, lads, he is not. Matthias Wanich from Luke and Harriers then just moves himself into third place. And then two, two races, we've got two races here. So a group of five or six at the back, and then a train of seven athletes just tucked in behind Jack Hopkins. So they went through, it was probably closer to 220 there through 800 meters. They were looking for 216, and that's Jack Hopkins just moving out. Dermot Brennan now on his own, 600 meters to go. So just getting it a little bit strung out, but not too much. So Dermot Brennan comes up 500 metres to go. Matthias Watches from Lucan Valley in third place, just going to move himself into second place. So Philip Cooper now moves into third. But Dermot Brennan looks pretty comfortable here. So 3.11.93 at the bell. Matthias Wanich in second place. Phil Cooper then in third. So Dermot Brennan, he has four or five metres with 300 metres to go over. Matthias Wanish from Luke and Harriers. So just over 200 metres to go and it's still Dermot Brennan. It has a little low over his right shoulder and you see Matthias Wanish is still only five or six metres behind. And then our two Lagan Valley athletes Lorcan Bell and Reese McManus. But it's Derek Brennan comes into the home straight. He's 10 metres. He sat behind the pacemaker the whole time and he's kicked away. He looks to have loads in the tank here. So round. It's going to be very, very close finish for second place. But Daniel Dines just gets up from North Down in the second place. 4.15.54 for Derek Brennan. Fast finish and Kieran Turner from Belfast Running Club comes across. He hits his watch. So five men's 1500s today. That's the E1 done. And now, in a couple of minutes, we have the men's A1500 metres.
So in the men's A1500 metres, we have Harry Purcell. We've seen him run some nice 800s here in 146s over the last couple of years. He's going to pace him through in So the athletes getting called in here for the TripAdvisor men's 1500 metres A race. Thomas James Dodd from Birchfield, coached by Lucas Bull. He's in Which one is it? 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 Which you're well used to doing a few speed sessions around this track. How, how did it all start? Um, started uh, 20 odd years ago, just by accident. Just got into it, got got involved in the running club scene. Started entering a few races, met some great people. And that was it. Couldn't couldn't stop then, you know. Yeah. Well, well, got the bug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sometimes you get more of a kick out of the running than you do the snooker. So, so it seems at times. Well, it's good for your health. That's the reason yeah. why. You know, you, you feel good, you feel fit, you feel healthy. They're both really hard sports, but at least this one you feel good after a snooker. You're sort of like, you know, it's more of a mental sport. With this one, you kind of yeah. always feel a bit better. You yeah, never yeah, feel yeah, worse yeah, exactly. after running than you do before it. So. And uh, sub 16 for a 5k? No, not sub 16. No, no my best was 1709. 1709. Yeah. Right, my mate calls me a plough horse. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a uh, great sort of runner. But you're only a young flea yet. Yeah. <laughs> so you're over for a few days, yeah? Yeah, over a few days, yeah. So watch watch the, today and tomorrow. I'll chill out with Eamon and the boys and, and then um, get home. Very good. So this is our A1500 metres underway. So yeah. the guy's going to look to run around 340 here. Um, so it's Harry Purcell then just moving to the lead as our pacemaker. So Harry Villanova scholarship student back 146 800 meter man so he has turn of speed 4 800 who's favorite for this one well it's hard to know there's a lot of the lads who are longer distance athletes stepping down the distance here so we have keelan kilrahel was on the irish team that won medals at european under 23 cross country he's tucked in the middle of them there yeah. jamie battle jack o'leary but It'll be interesting to see who Kieran Kelly then is one of these old horses there in the white with the green shorts. He's been around forever. He's had more retirements than anyone can imagine, and he's going to be going to try and be there or thereabouts. And then Thomas Moran as well. Just don't see him in the field there at the minute. Partner to Kieran McGeehan in the middle of the field here, but we'll see what sort of pace now when they come round through 600. Is this fella in the front, the pacemaker? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, he's got to do well to keep that going. Yeah, he's a, he's a four 800 meter specialist. So there's okay. no way he'd last 1500. Yeah. So they're through there in around 129, 130 through the first 600. So they're just sub 60 seconds a lap. Harry's telling them, are you coming with me or not coming with me? So it's Bram Bugel from Holland is leading them out. And then... Abdurrahman Mohammed and Tom, Thomas Dodd from Birchfield. So they're the three. So it's the three visitors leading the field out. So 13, 15 and 16. Just open up a little bit of a gap. Harry looks at his watch. He's gone through probably bang on two minutes through 800 metres. So Bram Buegel from Holland with a 146, 800. So he does have a turn of speed. So it looks as though Harry will probably bring them to a thousand meters. And then I'd say it'll be a burn up between them. So we should see Harry step away pretty soon. So Bram Buegel from Holland 
leads them out. On his shoulder then is Thomas Dodd from Birchfield. So it's the Dutch athlete on the inside. It's the Birchfield Harrier then wearing 16 on the outside. So it's Thomas Dodd from Birchfield going to take the bell 245 at the bell. So it's not going to be, it's going to be low 340s, I'd say. And then there's Thomas Moran and Jack O'Leary then, four and five, Keelan Kilrell. So the three Irish athletes are beginning to close them down. They're the guys that have the stamina. The boys in the front are the more eight, 1500 metre specialists. But it's Thomas Dodd from Birchfield. And then Bram Buigel from Holland on his shoulder. So you're probably looking for the Birchfield Harrier to win, are you? Well, no, I'm just looking for a good race, but the guy in front looks good. But the one in, he ain't, he ain't shaking the one off behind, is he? Yeah, he's not gone yet. He he's going to come out wide here. I think so. So Bram Buigel, Buigel is coming out wide, but can he get back at Thomas Dodd? It looks as though he can. Oh, look at that. Look at the hurt on the two boys' wow. legs. But Bram Wiggle from Holland took that in 3.42 of 57 last lap. So there's not much you can do when your legs go to jelly like that, is there? Oh, there's yeah. no, it's the same, no matter how good or how bad an athlete you are, when you're giving it all and the legs are gone, you're just praying for the line to come. I always fancy the guy that's behind now on the, on the bend to do it because you just think he just knows yeah. when to go yeah. or... Yeah, you just get that extra bit of, I don't know what it is, when you come onto somebody's shoulder and you yeah. know that they're tiring. Yeah. You're wrecked yourself, but... Yeah, you're right. yeah exactly. Yeah. So it was a great race. Oh, that's good. So you're going for the dinner and everything with the athletes tonight? Probably, yeah. Yeah. Kind of a bit of, f bit of food. Um, yeah, just going to enjoy it. Going to enjoy it. It's been coming for a few years, so good, good finally to get here. Yeah. You were down to late, late last night? Yeah, the late, late show. Uh, which was good. Done a lot of interviews yesterday in, in Dublin with yeah. the book and stuff. So And in London the day before, so a bit tired now. So yeah. looking I forward to just watching a bit of running. I flew into Malta from Malta this morning and came Did straight you? here. So, oh, yeah. Wow. So, uh, I'm a bit tired myself. Is that where you're based in Malta? No, no. I was just over working for a few days over oh, there. Yeah. So okay. um, then I realised, uh, mm. I promised Damon I was going to do this. Okay. There was a bit of fog in Dublin this morning and the flight was delayed. I was getting a little bit worried. Oh, really? What's so this now? The ladies, man? Yeah. So, next up, we have the women's A1500 metres. Oh, so this is the, the, the fast girl, This yeah? is the fast ladies. Where's their numbers in? So that's the bib number the bib that they're wearing here. Yeah. So Hannah Nuttall was probably going to be the favourite here, but she withdrew, unfortunately. These are their times, PBs. So these are all our PBs down the right-hand yeah. side here, yeah. So this is the she's the favourite. Yeah. She's done 410 this one. 410, yeah. It's clipping along, yeah. Yeah, she's unfortunately not running. Hannah Nuttall's not running. She's not in it today, no? No. Okay, so she must, she's got the best time this one, yeah. Yeah, you might have the best time, but it depends on the form you're in. Yeah, Early course, season. Yeah. yeah. Who do you fancy win it? Oh, Marissa won that night. Oh, Helen Clip trained by coach yeah, Helen Clip. Oh, yeah. A big field, big field. So perfect conditions. <laughs> So if you could move your Great view here, isn't it? Watch the whole thing here. It's superb, isn't it? So we're joined by Eamon Christie here, our race director. He doesn't have headset on him, but he's he's walking around with a smile on his face. He's pretending he's not nervous, but we know he is. If to take your heart rate, I'd say it's pretty high. <laughs> yeah. It's always nice when it comes together on the day. Yeah, and all that you need sponsors and supporters, and these things don't happen by chance. Three, three, four is Leon Nicola Deneen from Leeville, and we 
So this is the second or third year of TripAdvisor. Of <laughs> Come on board, yeah. Second of four, okay. So big field here in the women's A1500 meters. As we said, unfortunately, Hannah Nuttall had to withdraw, but look out for Marissa Damming from Holland, a 4.10 PB. And then Amy O'Donoghue from Dundrum, South Dublin, coached by Joe Ryan, 4.14. So we're doing a lot of pacing on the indoor season. And then right on the inside, we have Nicole Dynan from Lee Vale, one of our top under 18 athletes in Ireland. And then obviously the great Lucy Foster from Willowfield, another one of the top juveniles in Ireland. That's Neve Markham then in second place. So the pace here, Neve Carr. It's going to take them through in 66 67s. So they're looking to run at around 410 pace here. Well, the field seems to be pretty well bunched together. So that's Marissa Damming tucked in behind our pacemaker. Carla Sweeney then from Rathfarnham, Amy O'Donoghue. In third, Ellie Hartner from UCD, then in four. So just in third place there, Carla Sweeney won the national indoor 1,500-meter title this year. The field well strong out here in this very early stages. So just coming through 500, 125, 126. So we can see Marissa Damming looking at our watch, just checking to see that the pace is what she wants. She'll tell the pacemaker to push it on if it's not fast enough. But Carla Sweeney seems to be the only one that's going to go with them. A little bit of a gap then to Amy O'Donoghue and Ellie Hartnett. But again, you hope the pacemaker can take them to 1,000 metres or so and then let them at it. So have you done 15s? No, I've never done a 15. No. I think, I think the 3K was the shortest I'd done. That was tough enough. Yeah. What a fantastic three, 3K men's coming up later on with Andrew Cosgren and Nick Griggs. Yeah, I've heard, yeah. They've had, they've had a great battle over a, a mile indoors last year, which made the headlines on the, on the sports news, which is great for athletics. Yeah, of course, cool, yeah. So then our pacemaker's gone after 800 metres. She brought them through in 2.20 or so. So pace a little bit slower than they were looking for. And that's why probably Marissa Damink was looking at our watch this time a lap ago. Carla Sweeney is right there with her. So that's what Marissa wants. She doesn't want to be out there on her own. Carla Sweeney then leads out that chasing group of four. So they're going to come around. 500 meters to go. Marissa Damming. So are Holland going to win both the A men's and women's 1500 meters? So Bram Wiggle took the last race. Marissa Damming with a very nice stride, very upright stance. Looks at our watch again with 400 meters to go, but Carla Sweeney is going to put it right up to her here. So Carla Sweeney from Rathfarnham, having a great race. Paul Fleming has been involved coaching Carla from her very early days. So 250 metres to go. Marissa Damming, Carla Sweeney. Carla Sweeney's just getting ever closer and closer. Just over 200 metres to go. 200 metres to go, 3.43 on the clock. Carla Sweeney's going to make a move here. Can Marissa Damick respond to that? It looks as though she has. So she's kept the inside. Carla's going to have to go around the outside. So come into the home straight. You'll see Carla Sweeney move out into lane two and have another go at trying to take her on. So Carla Sweeney on the outside, Marissa Damick on the inside. And it just looks as though Marissa Damick is trying to do enough. And she just looks over and gives her that little Eamon Cochran-esque look. And is only ever trying to do enough to win this one. Carla Sweeney in second place. Very nice run to be 4.15 for her. Amy O'Donoghue third. 
Ellie Hart of UCD and then a great run by Nicole Dine and, and Amy Wallace there the two under 18 athletes they'll have massive PBs I'd say so a great race there but that was a pretty dominant display there what do you think of that one a huh? bit of showmanship race, yeah. there great race she looked comfortable didn't she she's just kind yeah. of like a very very good race and Aoife Carr from DCH crosses the line So the Dutch have taken the two premier 1500 meter races. Then we're getting back then to a bit of speed on the track. We have the men's C, B and A 400s. So four or five minutes now to the start of our 400s. One, two, three in that race. If you hang around, we'll be doing the presentation in the next two minutes. Two minutes, girls. Men's A and B, uh, one, two, three. So super race there. So two very, very close finishes in those 1,500 metres. First eight, I think she's heading down there to the bank of the 200. Number two, Ellie Hart. Number So getting underway now with the medal presentations and prize giving for those men's and women's 1500 metres. So again, keep an eye out on June the 10th. Entries open tomorrow. And UCD for what promises to be a, a fantastic day's racing in the brand new track in UCD. So it's an IMC event down there. Uh, being organised by James Nolan. So he'll have the UCD athletes, Dara Michael Hinney and Israel Olatunda, etc., racing that day as well. Be looking to break the four minute mile for the first time on the track. So, 10th of June, keep an eye out for the entries which open tomorrow for that. We'll do the ladies' presentation. Um, if the ladies make their way over, we've got your presentation on as well, ladies, so to save you moving off. Next on the track will be a plethora of 400 meter races, so we're looking forward to them. So our men, Bram Bugle, Thomas James Dodd, and, and Adrim Mohammed. line otherwise we're going to bring in the new rule I invented so three 400s coming up now in the next 10 or 15 minutes for the men's CB and A and then I'll be followed by the women's A 400 metres okay 
So we'll now have the medal presentation for the men's 1500 metres. For the TripAdvisor sponsored men's 1500 metres. In third place, from Holland with a time of 3.46.08, is Mohamed Abderanan. And the medals and the prizes will be presented by the great Ronnie O'Sullivan. He was up in commentary there for the last while. So third place, time of 3.46 is Mohamed Abderanan. And then with 3.43.13, he thought he had it for a while, is Thomas Dodd. And then just coming back and regaining the lead with 50 metres to go with a time of 3.42.88 from Holland, Bram Buigel. I see Susan giving Carla Sweeney a hug there. So I think, yeah, PB for Carla. First time she's gone under 4.15. So she'll be getting our presentation now very shortly. To do the presentation once again. Thank you to Colin McLaughlin for the presentation, for the sponsor of the race. In third place from DSD. In a time of 4.20. So the Colin McLaughlin. Women's 1500 metres presentation about to happen now in third place from Dundrum South Dum. Dundrum South Dublin, excuse me, with 421 exactly was Amy O'Donoghue. And then Carla Sweeney with a 41498. She'll be very happy with that, as will Paul Fleming, our coach. It's Carla Sweeney, Rathfarnham, WSAF. And then the winner just did enough the whole way around. Winning in a time of 4.14.62 from Holland is Marissa Damming. Um, in a time of 4.14.62 from Holland, Marissa Damming. So it didn't seem to take too much out of Marissa. Uh, Marissa got her that enormous PB. So congratulations to our ladies in our 1500 metre race sponsored by Papa McLaughlin. Going to start now with our men's 800 metre races. Four hundred. Sorry, I missed the only one to do that. Right, so back to the action on the track. See men's four hundred meters. Lanes two to seven being used here. So called into their blocks now. Lane eight, Cormac Crotty from Manly. Lane seven, Niall Flanagan. Cushionstown, lane eight, six, Owen Kelly, Rada Kenny, lane five, Oshin McCarry, Rahini Shamrock, four, Luke Timlin, Crusaders, three, Adam Courtney, Bellamine and Antrim, two, Ryan Canning, letter Kenny AC, and we don't seem to have Owen Devlin for Mid Ulster, he's not going in lane one. So these boys looking to break 50 seconds for the first time, some of them, we have Niall Flanagan has a 49 48 out in lane seven. From Cushionstown, but it's inside him. Owen Kelly from Letter Kenny AC seems to be going the best. Well, I mean, Adam Courtney also having a good run there in in lane three, and then right in the inside, Ryan Canning from Letter Kenny AC. So it'll be these three when they come round. Cormac Crotty going quite well out in the outside as well. But they're going to come into the home straight here. It's going to be Ryan Canning on the inside, then Adam Courtney from Ballymena and Antrim, and then Owen Kelly. From Letter Kenny AC. But it's going to be so close here. It's Adam Courtney just seems to be getting back up to take this one. Oh, he takes that actually comfortably in the end from Ryan Canning and then Owen Kelly. 49.24. Massive PB for these guys. 
So that looks like a massive PB for both Adam Corney and Ryan Canning. So our athletes getting organised for the B men's 400 metres. So right on the outside, the decathletes, but also specialising in 400s and 400 hurdles from Lippersturban is Finn O'Neill. In lane seven, David Bosch from Dundrum, South Dublin. In lane six, Andrew Egan, Galway City Harriers. Lane five, Callum Baird, Ballymena and Antrim. Lane four, we have Owen Kenny from Waterford AC, just walking back towards the blocks. In lane three, Aaron Tierney Smith from Clan of Harriers. And in lane two, Kieran Nugent from Carrick Navarre. So all of these athletes have run sub 50. They're in the 48s, 49s. We saw 49 24 in that first race. So conditions favourable to fast times. Starter is going to get the athletes behind their blocks. So, great job being done by the East End YouTube guys. You see Neil McCartan down just outside lane eight there, just making sure everything is all right. And then Peter Morgan on the camera. So, athletes, about to get underway in the B men's 400 metres. So, great start there by Callum Baird from Ballymena and Antrim. And outside him, Andrew Egan from Galway City Harriers has closed in that stagger on David Bosch. So it's these two, the early leaders. And now it looks as though Callum Baird is going to close down the four, three staggers outside him. Owen Kenny from Waterford AC probably in second place at this stage. So will Andrew Egan respond to seeing Callum Baird coming up onto his shoulder? It looks as though he has responded, but it's going to be Callum Baird comes into the home straight from Owen Kenny and Andrew Egan, the three of them. But it's Callum Baird who leads them out in the centre of the lane. He's got three or four metres over Owen Kenny. Andrew Egan trying to come back at him and then David Bosch finishing strongly but it's going to be Callum Baird from Ballymena and Antrim from Owen Kenny and Waterford and then Andrew Egan and David Bosch in 46.93 oh my goodness if that's if that's correct that is seriously fast if that is a 46.93 which I'm not sure what are the men in the area is going to run so we'll have to just get that checked. I didn't look at the clock as they were coming to the finish because I was just interested in the race, but a 46.93, I can't see that being right. Hopefully it is.
the athletes getting ready now for the men's A 400 meters. So the biggest breakthrough in the last couple of years for men's 400 meters has been Jack Raftery from Denor Harriers. Jack out in lane five. In two, we have Aaron Keane from Tullamore Harriers. In three, Robert Irving Byrne from Talla AC. In four, Paul White, Nina Olympic. In lane five, Jack Raftery, Denor Harriers. In lane six, Carl Crosby from Ennis Track. In lane seven, Shane Monigal, Tullamore AC. And out in lane eight, we have Jamie Mitchell from Emerald AC. cloudier and the wind just beginning to pick up now So the scores and the doors are in from that B400 metres. And Callum Baird has run 46.95. It's like a second and a half PB. Owen Kenny, 47.64. Andrew Egan, 47.78. And David Bosch, 47.95. Massive PBs. First aid, if you can make your way to the finish line, please. First aid, make your way to the finish line. So that is an unreal B men's 400 metres. And now we have the... 400 meter men's A sponsored by Remy Adams of Fortis Gym. So Remy himself, seriously talented 400 meter runner back in the day. So it's just got a little bit more overcast, a little bit cooler, and you can see that wind is a little bit stronger. But if the B race ran at 46.95, I am a little bit excited about this one. So the A men's 400 meter underway. Fantastic start there by Carl Crosby from Menace Track. So no better man to chase down than Carl Crosby for Jack Raftery. And then Shane Monigal from Tremor has gone off very, very strong out in lane seven. So now Jack Raftery never gets carried away, just gets into it, runs his own race. So now he begins to close down Carl Crosby and Shane Monigal's stagger. Going very well as Aaron Keane from Tullamore Harriers on the inside as well, but it's now Carl Crosby's trying to respond here to Jack Raftery into the home straight. This is again going to be extremely fast here. And now Jack Raftery begins to pull away from Shane Mo from Carl Crosby in second place. And a great run by Aaron Keane in third place. But they're beginning to tie up here. 46 68. So just the last 40 50 metres really took its toll there on Jack Raftery. So 46 68. So that just shows how fast that second B400 was. The Callum Baird ran 46.95. So Jack Raftery took that. Cahill Crosby did push him. So the 400 is coming thick and fast now. We have the women's 400 meters sponsored by First Point USA. And anyone that's here that is listening into my uh, droll tones, Karen Kirk is down there at around the 60 meter mark. If anyone wants to go down and discuss options for U the US colleges, Karen would be more than happy to be able to talk to any of you.
So what a women's 400 meters we have in prospect here. In lane eight, from Holland, we have Priscilla Van Orschot. In lane seven, Kelly McGrory from Tyr Connell. In lane six, brilliant indoor season for Charlene Maudsley. In lane five, inside her, we saw her win the 200 metres earlier on, Phil Healy from Bandon AC. And in lane four, we have Saren Bundy-Davies from Great Britain. In lane three, Roisin Harrison from Ireland. In lane two, Leah bergen Clonliff harriers And on the inside, Quiva Cronin from La Kayla. Women's A 400 meters spotted by First Point USA. So it just looks like on the list slightly different. Charlie Maudsley looks to be going in lane four. And then obviously Saren Bundy Davis is swapped out to lane six. So Charlene will have Phil to look at as opposed to the other way around, which we thought was the case. expect this but to be between Charlene, Phil and Saren, but don't rule out Roisin Harrison either. So we're away, women's 400 metres, what a top quality 400 metres it is. And Phil Healy has gone off pretty fast here. She's closed down. Sarah Bundy Davis on the outside of her. Charlene Maudsley now just beginning to close that stagger a little bit on Phil Healy now. And then Charlene Maudsley looks as though it's going the fastest down that back straight. So she's closed right up on Phil Healy. So it's Charlene Maudsley in the lead here. And she's pulling away from Phil Healy at the moment. So she's on the inside stagger and she's about two, three, four metres ahead. She's absolutely running away from the field here. Roisin Harrison going well then on the inside as well. But this is a dominant display by Charlene Maudsley through the first 300 metres. She's way out in the lead. She's 10 metres clear. Wendy Bundy Davies in second place. Phil coming back strong at her. But what a run by Charlene Maudsley here. She'd be looking at the clock. It's 49.50, 51.74. So Wendy Bundy Davies second, Phil Healy third. So you will not see much more of a dominant display than that over 400 metres. Brilliant run there from Charlene Maudsley, the Newport AC athlete. So 51.74. 51.74, 51.74. We'll be having the presentations now for those 400s and then we'll be getting underway with our series of 100 metres. Two races in the men's 100 and then the women's 100.
So Charlene Mosley's time rounded down by 100 to 51.75. Saren Bundy Davies was second in 52.76, and Phil Healy was third in 53 flat. Roisin Harrison then very close, 53.06. So a couple of medal presentations now for those 400s. And then five minutes to the start of our 100s. So Portis Jim, men's 400 metres presentation about to take place. In third place, Aaron Keane from Tullamore Harriers with 48.19. In second for men's track was Carl Crosby with 47.07. And then the champion from the North Harriers is Jack Raftery with a time of 46.68. So the presentation next for the first. Is Phil Healy. In second place from GB, a very, very, very second, happy all the way Bundy from Great Davis. Britain, is Serene Bundy Davies in 52.76. And then a very impressive champion from Newport AC with Charlene Maudsley in a time of 51.75. Thank you. 
you switch? Tell us when we're live. Here with uh, Charlene Mosley, winner of the women's 400 meter A race. Great racing, Charlene. Charlene, 51.75, just outside the the world standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, it's so close to my PB, and it's my first race of the year, so I'm really happy, and I'll take a lot of confidence going through to my next few races. Very good, and you'll be racing throughout Europe then over the summer months, chasing the standard, and possibly a quota position even will be up for grabs. Yeah, look, the aim is to run the standard. I think if you're going to be competing at Worlds. You need to be going in with having around the standard but then again if i do make it on the quota of points you will see me in my lane so yeah i'm really looking forward to the season ahead very good thanks for coming to to belfast oh no it's amazing track so i'm just delighted to be here thank you thanks so in lane two we have andrew proctor from lagan valley lane three toby thompson from ballymean and antrim Lane four, Kieran Elliott from Tala AC. Lane five, Michael Farley, Rahini Shamrock. In lane six, Craig Duffy, Clan of Harriers. In lane seven, Arnor Brian Jarson from City Lisburn. And in lane eight, Goodwin Matthias from Tala. should see this between Kieran Elliott, Michael Farley and Craig Duffy in lanes four, five, six. So a great start by Kieran Elliott from Tala AC there. But right in the inside, Toby Thompson's having an absolute flyer here. Toby Thompson looks as though he's going to take this one. So Toby Thompson takes that from Michael Farley and then Craig Duffy in 11.01. So 11.01, coached by the great Phil Snoddy. So 11.01 looks as though it's a 0.26 second PB for him. So unfortunately in our A men's 100, Israel Alatonda had to withdraw early this morning due to stomach bug. So unfortunately we won't see him today, but keep an eye out for Pori Akinola, the other UCD, UCD athlete. He was a PB at 10.30. And then Rob McDonald so is going to run this 100 after running in the 200 earlier on. So we have from the inside Namjika on Woomera from Metro St. Bridget in one. In two, Connor Mori from Lee Vale AC. Lane three, Joseph on Ojiwumi from Tala AC. All coached by Daniel Kilgallen. In lane five, we have Bori Akinola. From UCDAC, and then Rob McDonald from Galway City Harriers is in six, and Christopher Sabanda from Clonliffe Harriers is in seven, and Keith Pike from Clonliffe Harriers in lane eight. In lane four, Joseph Ayong Wee from Tala. Again, Daniel coaching him has a PB of 10.41. In lane five, Bori Akinola from UCD, ex of the Galleons has a PB of 10.3. If he's in shape, he's the guy we should be looking at. But hey, look what happened in that B, 100 meters. In lane six, Robert McDonald from Galway City Harriers, coached by Brendan Lynn, is a 10.43 PB. And we saw him earlier having a very good 200 meter race. Lane seven, it's a great run there by Toby Thompson taking that B 111.01. Michael Farley, Rainey Shamrock in 11.13, and then Craig Duffy, Clonliffe Harriers, third at 
John Cheers has a PB of 10.72 and a season's best of 10.84. So all of our lads here are way, way, way under, you know, sub 10.8, sorry, 10.7. Most of them are down in the low 10 plus. So this is going to be a fast race. Looking forward to it. The 100 meters men A race sponsored by K or W Law. So athletes called behind their blocks here. So Rob McDonald straight into his blocks, no mess in there. The others all have their routines. to settle is Nimjika and Wimmera from Metro St. Bridget. It looks as though we're ready. So great start there by Bory Akinola and Joseph Ejuwemi from Tal ASC. But it's Bory Akinola and Rob McDonald is chasing them down as well. Looks like Rob McDonald is actually going to get up to this. He's actually moving away from them in the last 20, 30 metres. Rob McDonald takes that in 10.46. So I was not expecting that speed over 100. So 10.46 for Rob McDonald. He moved away from them with about 20, 30 metres to go and won it very easily. So a decent day's work for Rob McDonald, second in the 200 to Mark Smith, winner of the 100. Probably have the camera in his hand later on, taking a few pics. one more 100 the women's 100 and then we get underway with four of our 1500 meter series the b women's 1500 and the dc and b men's 1500 minutes before ready for the women's 100 still the leggings and t-shirts on
So the pace of this D-Men's 1500 is 64s. So they're looking to try and break the four minute mile or the four minute 1500 if they can. So a lot of the athletes at times between 4.05 and 4.15. So a big ass to try and break four minutes, but that's the pace they've it's been set up for them. They've been called in now. It's a beautiful setting here at Mary Peters track. One of the nicest settings of any track that you'll get. That it's just like an amphitheater. Really popular area to sit in the good weather is over in the back straight. So good crowd over there and then Great crowd on the home straight and in the stands. So there's the whistle. Athletes getting called in. So where we go. Men's D. So that's Jack Hopkins is leading them out and then on the inside then we Finn Diver there from Beachmount Harriers. So it'll just take them a little while to settle down. Pretty fast first hundred but that then they just get themselves into their pace, settle it down and try and go through in 64s. So a tall figure of Connor Curran there in the North Belfast Harriers singlet. So very actively involved in the club in North Belfast Harriers. They have their afternoon of 5Ks here, which is always very successful. So I go through the first 400. And they'll be pretty bang on by the looks things. So 63 through the first 400 metres. Field well strung out in the early stages. So there is a train of eight or nine athletes that are well strung out in this very, very early stages. So just getting a little bit more bunched up here now. So it's Tom Baird from Pontypridd Rodents, from Finn Diver Beach Mount Harriers. Then we have Killian Keegan from Clonliffe Harriers there. So they're going through 800 now in 2.9, 2.10. So it's just slowed a little bit, 63 to then a 66. So now Connor Curran, you just see him moving up on the inside here. So the pace looks to have slowed down a little bit. They got a little bit more bunched up there. And then in about fourth place overall, Mark Litchfield from St. Peter's AC. And then somebody's just made a move here. Let's see who this is. So Barry McCarthy from Crusaders AC has gone from about sixth to right on to Finn Diver's shoulder. So that was a big move in about 60, 70 metres there for Barry McCarthy, coached by one of the IMC stalwarts. Michael McGovern, so he's going to take the bell at 2.59. So they have to come home in 60 if they're going to break that four minutes, but hopefully probably 4.05, 4.06. So it's Barry McCarthy, Finn Diver now, comes right up onto his shoulder. And now Finn Diver takes it on, 300 metres to go, 3.14, 3.15. And Finn Diver didn't get too upset when Barry McCarthy came onto his shoulder and just took his time. So 
So he hasn't really opened up the gap. The three of them are coming back at them. So it's Finn Divers going to come into the home straight, but he probably looks the worst of the three of them coming in that home straight. So that is timed to absolute perfection there. So Charlie Jones. So Charlie Jones just bided his time there. He looked as though he was gone with about 2.50 to go and he just came through and stormed away to take that one. So a great run there, timed it to perfection. So the winning time, four minutes, 0.58. So finished in it, finished in fairness to him in a 60 seconds. So the Lagan Valley athlete, Charlie Jones, is very, very strong there. 408 to run a four minute. Yes, I'll be well happy, and there's a lot more in the tank there. He won it pretty easy, although he is leaning over the steeplechase jump there now, so he has given it probably everything, but he looked very comfortable coming up that home straight. So that's one to watch, that young athlete, Charlie Jones. On the track now, we have the women's B 1500 meters. So it's been a good day for some of the UCDA, UCD women. And this one we have Kate Nurse also coached by James Nolan, so Ellie Hartnett had a very good run in the year 1500. And Susie Nestor also in the prizes in the women's 800 metres. So getting into their positions over the start line. So the athletes, Ema McGlynn from Waterford AC, Ashling Smith, Bellamine and Antrim, Lily Rimmer, Lagan Valley, Sarah Bateson from Clan of Harriers, Rachel O'Shea from Cork Track Club, Kiva Phelan, St. Senans, Isabel Cuff, Luke and Harriers, Cora Scullion, Oma Harriers, Joanne Mills, Newcastle AC, Laura Chute, Clan of Harriers, Kelly Breen from Northeast Runners, Neve Moore, Lee Vale, Lauren Murphy from Killies AC, Kate Nurse from UCD AC, and the pacemaker is Neve Markham, who's going to take them through in 72s. So 4.30 pace is what they're looking at here. So on that, D men's 1500 metres in third place was Barry McCarthy from Crusaders AC in 4.02.20. So we saw him make that massive move from about 600 to 500. Finn Diver from Beachmount Harriers was always in the mix. He was second in 4.01.90. And then a very fast finish in, in the last 300 metres for himself, right in contention, ran away from the field. From Lagan Valley and Bracknell AC was Charlie Jones in time of 4 minutes, 0.58. So starter, going to blow the whistle to see if they're ready at the finish. So the arm goes up to say, yeah, we are. So we're ready to go in the women's B1500 metres. So 
We had to go and right on the outside is Neve Markham. So we see her go to the front. That's Kelly Breen, then the black from Northeast Runners. She won the indoor under 23, 1500 meters. And then right on her shoulder is Neve Moore from Leave LAC, coached by the great Donny Walsh. So 72s we're looking at. So let's see, yeah, the 36 coming around through 200. They're probably about bang on there. So it's Kelly Breen on the inside. Neve Moore just on her outside. And then Lauren Murphy from Killies. And then Joanna Mills from Newcastle. AC. So Neve Markham looks over her shoulder, but they're all there with her still. So we saw Neve running the A 1500 meters, but on the outside is Neve Moore. On the inside of her is Kelly Breen. And then Lauren Murphy from Kelly's. Newcastle's AC, Joanne Mills. And then we have our Clonliff athletes of Laura Chute and Sarah Bateson. So, Neve Markham, they're just not tracking her. They're three, four meters behind. But it's Kelly Breen and Neve Moore. They've been at the front from the start. So, it's Neve on the outside, Kelly on the inside. Lara Murphy has just sat in behind them for the whole race so far. And then it's Laura Chute from Joanne Mills. And then Isabel Cuff from Luke and Harriers. So we'll be looking for them to go through in around 224, 225. Neil Markham keeps looking over her shoulder and saying, he's going to come with me or not. So Neve Moore, we'll see what her time is through 800. So it's a bit off. They're about 228, so 74s. So we're closer to the... High 430s than the 430 itself, closer to 440 than 430. But it, Neve Markham is saying, right, I've done enough here. And it's over to you, Neve. So it's Neve Moore, Kelly Breen tucked in behind her. Then Lauren Murphy. Laura Chute then in four. Isabel Cuff then from Luke and Harriers just moving up onto the shoulder of Laura Chute. So she looks as though she's starting to make a bit of a move. So the two have been in the lead from the very start, but they're going to come up and get the bell this time. It's Neve Moore from Kelly Breen. Lauren Murphy has sat in third place the whole time. And then Isabel Cuff now makes her way through, puts herself right in contention at the right time. So a lap to go. Neve Moore, 325 at the bell. Isabel Cuff, Kelly Breen, Lauren Murphy, Laura Chute. So Neve Moore, with just over 300 metres to go. She's a couple of metres over Isabel Cuff. Kelly Breen is right there as well, as is Lauren Murphy. And that gap's just beginning to close again, I think. But it, no, it's beginning to open up again. Now Kelly Breen's the one that looks as though she's going to try and close it down. Just over 200 metres to go. Neve Moore from Leeville. Kelly Breen in second place. Lauren Murphy on the inside. Isabel Cuff on the outside. So the gap is still about five metres. But it looks as though it's beginning to increase now. So Neve Moore from Leeville is going to come into the home straight with a big lead. Kelly Breen's in second place. Then Laura Murphy and Isabel Cuff. But they were 1-2 the whole way throughout this race. But it's going to be Neve Moore from Leeville AC gets the better of Kelly Breen. And then a good battle between Laura Murphy and Isabel Cuff for third. Looks as though Isabel Cuff's going to get this. With a time 4.35. Kelly Breen probably about 4.37 on Isabel Cuff and then Laura Murphy. And then Cora Scullion, it looks from Oma Harriers, came in next. So 
So two more 1500s to go, the C and the B men's 1500s. And then we start with our series of men's and women's 800s. We have four women's 800s and five men's 800s. So men's C, 1,500 metres underway. So Mitchell Byrne is going to pace this one for us. So come round into the home straight. Mitchell Byrne from Rath Farnham is going to lead them out. Jack Marr from Galway City Harriers. Moy Valley, Dara Mulrooney. Oh, we've nearly had a faller. Susan, the commentator down there, nearly lost her life. So there's a bit of a scream there. Christopher Keenan from Drahadan District, just there. So Mitchell clicks his watch, and he was 64 there. He's been asked to do 63s. And Jack Marr, coached by Matt Lockett, high performance endurance coordinator with Athletics Ireland. So he'll be making sure that Mitchell goes through bang on for his athlete. So Oshin Davis in second place there in the race from Crockwell. And then Drogheda District's Christopher Keenan. So you can see the pace picking up here. So Mitchell McLaughlin constantly looking over his left shoulder to see are they with him. But Jack Maher is right on his heels. Oshin Davis from Crockwell. Then Christopher Keenan from Drogheda District. So Mitchell comes off 67 seconds through the first 800 metres. So now Jack Maher is a long, long run for home, 700 metres. 
O'Sheen Davis is right there. Christopher Keenan still tucked in there, but there's six or seven of them still in that group. So Marcus Clark just at the back of that group, trying to hang on. So six of them beginning to pull clear. Frank Buchanan from St. Michael's College, and Skillen, I think, is in that group there as well. Rahini Shamrock, Andrew Highland. And then Marcus Clark. So going to come up and get the bell. So Jack Marr from Oshin Davis, 254 at the bell. Christopher Keenan. And then we have Frank Buchanan. And then just the back of that group is Andrew Highland. Marcus Clark's just beginning to tail off a little bit. 300 metres to go. So Jack Marr has been on the Pacers' heels the whole way. Now he's opening up two, three metres over Rushing Davis from Crockwell. Just over 200 metres to go. And look at Frank Buchanan from St. Michael's College in Enniskillen. And also Andrew Highland from Rohini Shamrock. Christopher Keenan's trying to stay in contention with them as well. But the gap now, eight, ten metres for Jack Marr from Galway City Harriers. And now... Rahini Shamrock's Andrew Highland has tried to kick for home, but I think it's too late, is it? But maybe it's not. Andrew Highland is coming right back at Jack Maher here. Can Jack Maher hold on? Andrew Highland senses the victory. There's not much Jack Maher can do about it. He's looked over both shoulders. He just could do nothing about it. Time to perfection. 356.16. A massive PB. 402 before this. So a brilliant run there by Andrew Highland. Just got it on the line.
the whole bunch of 10, 12 of them together. So Kieran moves out. They were probably 2-5, two, 2-6 two, there, and it's going to become a tactical race now by the looks of things. Look at them all bunching up here together. These boys aren't out for times. These boys are out to try and win this B1500 metres. They're all bunched up together. 600 metres to go. Louis Mallon on the inside. So now, who is going to make this move? Is it going to be a waiting game? So Cormac Dixon from Tala AC comes up onto the outside here. And the inside, Louis Mallon. Just going to try and see who that is in the lead. So it's Sean Cotter from Crockwell. Didn't recognise the singlet. Sean Cotter from Crockwell. Keen Kelly. Cormac Dixon. Patrick Noonan is right there as well. Oh, Jack Miskella is right there. Prehan Gebrahan from Annadale Striders. They're just beginning to open up a little bit of a gap now over Michael Murphy. And Michael McCarthy. So Cormac Dixon's taking it on. Keen Kelly. He's been dogged with injuries over the years. Back running. It looks as though he's going to be the one with 200 metres to go. Is going to take this on. 200 metres to go. Keen Kelly's opened up two, three, four metres over the rest of the field. So great to see him back running as well as he is. Keen Kelly's moving away from the field. Cormac Dixon's in second place. Here comes Brahan from Annadale Striders round on the outside. But Keen Kelly... He st was right there, always in second or third place. And now he's moved away with about 2.50 to go. Cormac Dixon and Brahan Gebrahan from Annadale Striders battling it out. Brahan's going to get the better of that. And then it's the two Crockwell boys. Sean Connor just gets the better of that one. So 3.51.84. A great run by Keen Kelly from St. Abbans. So Keen Kelly coached by Phelan Kelly now. Was a DCU athlete, then went back home for a number of years. Now, obviously, back up in Dublin, being coached by Phelan. That's a massive PB, 351 off the best of 353 before that. So, a few minutes break now. There's six minutes before we get underway with our 800 metres. So we've eight 800 metres in a row. So folks, we're going to definitely, this time, move our attention over to the finish line and we're going to have the first few 800 metre races. We love the 800 metres. Good fast racing. We've got... So we're going to start with our E men's and women's 800s and then our D and C men's 800s. But five minutes to go now before the start of our men's 800 metres. But before that, we have a handful of these 800 metre races coming up.
saw Keen Kelly's time there. 3.51.84. Brahan Gebrahan from Adil Striders. Second in 3.52.67. And then a good run by Cormac Dixon, the under-18 athlete from Tala AC. 3.53.04. So we're waiting to get underway with our first of our series of 800 metres, the men's E800. And the men's C1500. Great finish there by Shane Spring from Rainy Shamrock. Take that in 3.56.18. So we have our men's E 800 metres underway. So these guys all looking to break two minutes. So Mark Hanrahan on the outside is going to bring them through in 58 seconds. So all the pacemakers wearing the on-running singlets. So Aaron Cashman from Crusaders tucked in behind the pacemaker. So this field well strung out in the early stages here. So coming. Looks as though he's going to be bang on here with Aaron Cashman sitting right on his shoulders. Rath Farnham's Ryan O'Neill then just out on the outside. Of John Wersky from South Galway. So through the bell, 59 seconds, 58.93 for the pacemaker. 59 mid probably for... Aaron Cashman from Crusaders. He's been tracked now all the time by Ryan O'Neill. Is tucked right in behind him here. And these two are beginning to go away from the field. Going through 500 metres now, 114. So they're on course for a sub two minutes. And now Ryan O'Neill has kept this pace going. You can see that they're closing up in behind. So he has tried to push it on to keep that pace. And that gap away from everybody else. Lachlan Connolly from Annadale Striders now is into third place. 200 metres to go. They're bang on 130 here. Can Ryan O'Neill from Rathfarnham maintain this and do sub 30 for the last 200 metres? They're bunching up in behind him here. So they come round into the home straight now. And Ryan O'Neill. So it looks like Ethan Isles then from North Down has put himself in contention in second place. But it looks as though he's going to come on and take this one from Lachlan Connolly. They've timed it to perfection. But he was hardly in contention at the start and he's gone on to take this. Ethan Isles from North Down SEO 201.23. Yeah. So it looks like Ethan had a 205.24 PB and he's just come out and run a 201. So he's headed into territory that he's never been in before. But he ran a very clever race. Didn't get carried away with the 59 second first lap. Just stayed well back and then he came through extremely strong in the end. So next up we have the women's E800. Love that lads. I love the 800 meters
So we'll wait now for the E Women's 800 to come out on the track. Still a couple of minutes before, so it's great that everything is run on time. Great when the athletes are able to warm up, knowing that their race will go exactly as planned. So still an hour and a half or so of top class athletics to go. So athletes coming out on the track here. So we have Maeve Lockery from Crusaders, Sarah McDonald, Jenny Johnston from Clonliffe Harriers, Annie Hughes from Crusaders, Maria Dunn from St. Lawrence O'Toole, Rebecca Moore, City of Lisbon, Erin Cross, Willowfield Harriers, and Laura Garcia Gonzalez from Crusaders. So these athletes are going to be paced by Siobhan Whelan in 68 seconds. Rachel Gibson, if you're in the stadium, Rachel, if you can make your way to the start line. So these athletes, one of them is sub Rachel, 220. Jenny Johnson from Clonald Harriers is 219.57. So the aim Thank for these you. will be to try and get under the 220, 68s for the first lap, and then see what happens after that. Change in pacemaker, yeah. Rachel Gibson is going to take it on in 68. Siobhan Whelan got herself injured in her 1500 metres earlier on. So just trying to get the back straight cleared. So anybody who is an athlete or an official, we get all these athletes the track to themselves. So as you can see, it's pretty busy over by the 1500 meter start. This where a lot of the athletes can't congregate. Folks, for those of you over there warming up, just be mindful that all of the 800 meters, I know you're 800 meter runners, but all the 800 meters are going to come by you now. I want you to do two things. Get off the track when the race starts, and then if you're doing strides, please stay out in lane, say, five, six, seven, eight. Don't come into the inner lanes. It's not fair of the athletes that are racing. We have no objection to you doing your strides. Just don't impede with the athletes who are racing. So just waiting to clear the track on the far side, and we'll be underway with our next 800 metres. So thankfully, Rachel, it's putting her spikes on first now, great girl, had a super PB in the 1500 meters that she just raced. And I was saying to her, I haven't seen her race in so long. It's great to see her back, great to see her running so well. We've asked um, 
Rachel to do a 68 second lap for these ladies, both the new two 800 meter running. Okay, so it looks like we're ready. Pacemaker, replacement pacemaker, Rachel Gibson in situ out in lane eight. Okay, so slight delay, but we're on the way again. And we're off in our 800 meter ladies. So e it looks like Jenny Johnson from Conliff in lane, in lane three. And Rebecca Moore from City of Lisbon are going to be the two early leaders with Erin Cross from Willowfield Harriers. So they all break into the inside now. Lane three is Jenny Johnson from Clonliffe Harriers. No Biden's coaching her. She did 219 here in the meet in 2020. So come up. Ooh, 31 32 for the first 200 meters. That is going to hurt later on. So, hence they are so strung out. That was pretty fast for the first 200 meters for athletes that are trying to break 220. So let's see what impact that has on them. So, it's Rebecca Moore has decided she's going to go with her. So now Rachel Gibson is going to slow it down a little bit, it looks like, but that first 200 metres looks like it was going to be a killer. So now they've slowed it down to 67.78. And Rachel Moore on her own, so it was a 31 and a 36. And then in behind now, we have Aaron Cross and just ahead of her, Jenny Johnson. And it's Rebecca Moore from City of Lisbon, Andrea Law, her coach, would be really happy. She's absolutely storming this out so there. So right Jenny down the back straight now. It does look like Clonlet Rebecca Harris Moore is full of running here. So she's coming up with Look to 600 metres. She's at 600 and 143, 144. Aaron Cross from Willowfield Harriers is in second place. Jenny Johnson then Clonliffe Harriers is three. So this has been a really, really good run here. She went off. Expected the pacemaker to take it through in 68. Or pacemaker took it through in 67, but in an, in an unusual way of doing it. But she's maintained this and been very, very strong in the second lap all on her own. Rebecca Moore from City of Lisbon. She's going to be a really big PB for her here. So Rebecca Moore takes that in around 2.16.75. Good run then by Aaron Cross from Willowfield Harriers in second place. Jenny Johnson is third. And then Annie Hughes from Crusaders. Followed home by Maeve Lockery, our club mate. And then Laura Garcia Gonzalez, also from Crusaders. So next up on the track, we'll have the men's D800 metres. Rebecca Moore, I didn't have a PB for you, so I'm dying to see how you did, uh, what your PB was coming in there. Well done to our ladies, E, we're going to move on now with our men's races. So the athletes are ready to come out onto the track now in the D men's 800 metres. So one of the athletes here, Sean Riley, Louth Championships last week, never broke two minutes and ran a 157.65. So he'd be looking to go even lower than that again today. Lee Byrne then from Ruth Farnham with a 155. Daniel Scully, Rahini Shamrocks with a 156. Matthew Fitzpatrick from Dunlear, an athlete I coach, is a two, oh, a two minutes point four two at the Dublin graded meeting, so he'd be looking to go sub two minutes for the first time. And then Mark Malone from Newry AC, the podcast king. So he has a two minutes point five. Has him down as a, a veteran V35. That's still a young fella. 
So men's D 800, the pace, Jack Hopkins, they're looking to go through in 56 here. Men D 800 meters. So ready to go, men's D 800 meters. So 56 seconds. It'll be unknown territory for some of these boys if they hang in behind the pacemaker. So Sean Riley St. Peters will probably break in ahead of the pacemaker. He'll settle it down now. Ben Gillen from Lagan Valley right in the inside. So our pacemaker gets to the front. Sean Riley is in behind him then. So through 200 metres in 27 seconds. And Sean Riley is sitting right on the pacemaker here. JD Kelly from Clonliffe Harriers, it looks like maybe in third place. And then we have Ben Gillen, Matthew Fitzpatrick. So let's see. Does Jack Hopkins bring them through much further? He's 56 seconds. He comes off the track. So Sean Riley's taking it on now. J.D. Kelly in behind him. And then we have Ben Gillen. And then there's a little bit of a gap to Matthew Fitzpatrick then. And Lee Byrne right in the shoulder of Matthew Fitzpatrick. But the five or six of them there. Matthew O'Shea is also right there as well. But it's... Sean Riley is taking this on to JD Kelly's on his shoulder. These two of them are just a bit clear. They're about 125. This is going to be fast. If they can go home in 30, it's a massive PB for both of them. JD Kelly has now kicked on. Sean Riley in second place. Ben Gillen then in third place. So into the home straight. JD Kelly storms away. Sean Riley in second place. Ben Gillen, Lagan Valley third. And then. Lee Byrne from Rathfarn and Matthew Fitzpatrick fighting back as well. But J.D. Kelly looks at the clock here. It's 153. It's another big PB for him. And then they're all coming in behind. They're all under two minutes, I'd say. So 153.82 and a 56. So not far off negative splits. 56.57. So a nice run in there by J.D. Kelly, coached by the great John Shields. So John obviously has to move from, from, wouldn't have access to Santry Stadium like he would with his training crew, most likely probably over in Alsar somewhere. But that was a nice run, 153. Men's D, men's C 800 next. And when you see PBs in a C 800, a 151s, it makes you a little bit excited about the year race coming up. So just over two minutes now to the start of our men's C800 metres. couple of athletes from St. Peter's in this one they'll have seen Sean Riley run another massive PB in that last one so Keen Gorham has a best of 153 and then Rory McLaughlin his training partner who has a 154 so Philip Maron's going to take them around in one f in 55 so the athletes we've Rory Casey from Toker coached by Emmett Dunleavy 
It's a 151.80. Lane one, then Rory McLaughlin, St. Peter's in two. Oshin Lynch, Killarney Valley in three. Felix Martinez, Crusaders. Then Ben Clavin from Caron AC, very consistent athlete, coached by Dermot McDermott. Then Keen Gorham, coached by Simon Allen up in St. Peter's, a great group of boys and girls there in that training group. Then Trian Rebega from Metro St. Bridget, James Gilliland, Annadale Striders, and Rory Prendeville, Emerald AC. So away we go. Philip Marin on the outside. And Rory Prendeville beside him. And then right in the inside, Killarney Valley, Zosheen Lynch in the green. Keen Gorham. With Rory McLaughlin from St. Peter's. So our leader, Philip Marin, takes them through 25, 26. Couple of metres to the rest of the group. Probably no harm to hang back there. So Trian Rebega leads out the group. Philip Marin, four or five metres as pacemaker. Ben Clavin in second place. Keen Gorham, three. And then Killarney Valley's Oshin Lynch. Rory McLaughlin. And then Rory Casey. So 54-43. This is fast. So pacemaker steps away. Sometimes think it'd be great if the pacemaker could take them to 5, 550 or even 600. It's a long run for home when you're in the lead if you follow the pacemaker. But Trian Rebega from Metro St. Bridget and Ben Clavin, Keen Gorham, and then O'Sheen Lynch. And then wait for Rory Casey and Rory McLaughlin. Not done yet either. And here comes Rory Casey moving himself into fourth place. But it's Trian Rebega from Ben Clavin, from Keen Gorham. And then Rory Casey trying to get himself onto the back of them. And here Keen Gorham starts to make his move. He sees Ben Clavin beginning to tie up. But He's not making any impact on Trian Rebega from Clonliffe Harriers. So Trian Rebega from Clonliffe Harriers. He's the best at 154.4. Keen Gorham in second place. A fast finish. Nushin Lynch in third. But this is going to be extremely fast here. 150.75. Keen Gorham will have a massive PB. Nushin Lynch will have a massive PB. This has to be the fastest track in Ireland. When you get no wind and you have this track the times are just incredible so 150.75 for a C men's 800 metres incredible stuff So a raft of PBs there in that men's C 800 metres. So we move back then to the women's D 800s next. So we wait for the women to come out in the next race. Our D women's 800 metres. Looks like Neve Markham is going to take them as pacemaker. So JD Kelly took that D men's 800 in 153.82. Sean Riley with another PB, hadn't broken two minutes until last weekend and runs a 156.58.
Lee Byrne, 156.96. Ben Gillen, Lagan Valley, 157.17. And then Matthew Fitzpatrick, the athlete I coach, first time break in two minutes. He had a PB of two minutes, 0.42, and he runs 157.75. We'll have to have a pint for that later on. So, just waiting for the D women to make their way out onto the track. Here's the whistle from the starter telling the athletes to come out. So, pretty even field here. All the athletes, PBs of 215 to 217 here. So, it'd be great to have four or five of them coming up that home straight out in the three, first three or four lanes, battling it out. So pace, 66s. So the athletes, Angeline McShane, City of Derry AC Spartans. Jodie Foster, Willowfield. Neve Brady, St. Peter's AC. She'd have seen some of her mates that she trains with smash the two minutes and better earlier on in the men's races. Louise Gaffney then from Rath Farnham, coached with Paul Fleming. Aveen McCormick, Glasslock Harriers, Shauna Layden, Mullingar Harriers, Katrina Dowling, Rath Farnham, and then Neve Markham, it looks like, is going to take the bout. Jodie Foster, you can come to the uh, start of your race here. It is the women's D 800 metres. Jody, we're on time, so we will, if you if you have to pull out, you can just let us know, but we're going to go ahead with this race if you don't get here in the next minute. Thank you. Athlete bound. All good. Looking forward to a great race here now. Our ladies, D, 800 metres. Lee Markham is pacing this. We're looking for a pace of 66 seconds. All right, so the athletes are on their lanes. <coughs> Starter is going to call them to their marks. So away we go, the D women's 800 metres. So it looks like Avine McCormick from Glasslock Harriers and Neve Brady from St Peter's are going to be the two early leaders in behind Neve Markham as they break in. So Neve Brady in second place Neve Markham looks over her shoulder she'll see there's four five six meters and that's because she's gone through in 30 seconds so way too fast so the chasing pack around 31 32 so now you'll see it settle down so it's Neve Brady from Avine McCormick leading the group out but they're all together so Jodie Foster from Willowfield just right at the back, but only about four or five metres between the whole field. Katrina Dowling from Rath Farnham. But it's going to be Avine McCormick, 66-15, so bang on. But again, it was a 30 and a 36. So very hard to pick it back up then again after slowing it down by so much. But... Avine McCormick from Glasslock has opened up a little bit of a gap over the rest of the field and they're being led out by Neve Brady, Katrina Dowling in behind her then and then Angeline McShane from City of Derry Spartans. Jodie Foster then just tucked in behind the, her. 
So just over 200 metres to go. They're at 140, 141 at 600 metres. So they're going to be at around 215 pace, it looks like. They're all bunched up in behind. Jodie Foster looks as though she's the strongest of that chasing group, but it's still Avine McCormick from Glasslock Harriers. Katrina Darling in second place, then Jodie Foster third, Angeline McShane, and then we have Neve Brady. But into the home straight, Avine McCormick from Glasslock Harriers from Katrina Darling, and Katrina's coming right back at her. Has she left it too late? Or can Avine hold on? Oh, it's the last thing you want. Oh, and she's held on. So Avine McCormick takes that in So great seeing these races just coming thick and fast. The C800 meter athletes coming out. Be paced by Ellie Hartnett, who's looking or being asked to go through in 64. So a lot of these athletes in or around the 210 mark. A lot of them still youths and under 20s. Looking for European Youth Olympic times, European under 20 ta qualifying times. So I see Sophie Jackman from St. Sennans, just Tennans, just jogging back down the track. I just saw on social media during the week that she was TCD's Athlete of the Year. So well done to her. So a really good field of young athletes in this. Yeah, so we have Renee Crotty from Annalee. Hazel Hughes from Clonus. Zoe Carruthers from City of Lisbon. Zoe Ritchie from Red Farnham. You see Charlotte Myers from Crusaders, Shen Wigfield Turner from Hallamshire Harriers and Sheffield, Eve Marie Nocter from Luke and Harriers, Erin Levy from Dunleer AC, and Sophie Jackman from St. Senna. So, all these athletes in the 210 to 213 range. So, I remember a couple of years ago being here, and Zoe Carruthers and Erin Levy battled it down that home straight. Nothing between the two of them, Erin just getting the better of. Zoe that day so will they do the same today or some of the other athletes will have a bit to say on that So still about 90 seconds before the start of our women's C800 metres. So as we wait for the women's C800 to start, Trian Rabega from MSB won the C men's race in 150.78. Keen Gorham, massive personal best, 150.192. Oshin Lynch, 152.42.
So away we go, nine athletes, including the pacemaker. So full field here. So Zoe Ritchie, it looks like, will be ahead of Ellie Hart at the pacemaker. Aaron Levy then right on the inside. So Sophie or Ellie will have to push our way to the front here. It looks like this will be a fast first 200 metres, but they're all pretty bunched up now. It begins to slow down as they let Ellie Hart and get to the front. Zoe Ritchie right there, Aaron Levy then in the middle of them. Renee Crotty just following Ellie Hartnett from Anna Lee. So it's Renee Crotty, Zoe Ritchie. So they're coming the home straight, 46, 47, 40. So they're going to be probably 63 or so at the bell. And Renee Crotty from Zoe Ritchie. And then Eve Marie Nocter. And then Charlotte Myers from Crusaders, but they're all pretty bunched together. So 63, 64. So the last athlete, which is Aaron Levy at the minute, and Sophie Jackman were 64, which is the pace they wanted to go through in. So they're all right in contention here. Renee Crotty still following Ellie Hart. And great to see Ellie Hart is going to take them to 500 metres there. And now Renee Crotty. So top class coaching team in James Nolan and Damien Lawler for Renee Crotty. And it's working at the moment. Eve Marie Nocter is trying to come back at her. And then Charlotte Myers from Crusaders is in third. Zoe Ritchie, four. And then Zoe Carruthers in five. So they're about 135 through 600 metres. So Renee Crotty from Eve Marie Nocter. Less than 150 to go. They're coming around into the home straight. So Renee Crotty only moved up to 800 in the last couple of years or so. He's been running threes and fours. But Eve Marie Nocter's coming back very strongly out of here. This is going to be a serious finish here. Eve Marie Nocter on the outside. And she's going to get the better of her. So Renee Crotty in second. Hazel Hughes from Clonus finish as well. In third. So 208.34. Really good run by Eve Marie Nocter. Another massive PB for her. Now I'm going to PB for Eve Marie on the 2.11 and that blocked out, stopped at 208 So again, our girls... Well, Renee Crotty had a 2.13 PB coming into that and she's probably run a 2.09. Today, going, quite a few of them are going to end up with super PBs. That was a great race, girls. That 800 metres, wow, that last 100 is always the toughest, especially if Mr. Lactic arrives in the last 100. Next on the track after that super race, we're going to have a great race here. And then so with the men's B800, followed by the men's A800. Take place in four minutes. So a few minutes break before we get underway. So, men's B800 out in the track, still a couple of minutes to go. So, this is going to be hopefully a sub 150 here. The athletes are well capable of it. There's a few of them looking to get the 149 flat standard for the European under 20s. Neil Kilhan ran. 151 in the Dublin graded meeting and a turn of speed at 200 metres to go. He just blew away the field. He's had some great races against Jack Kelly from Tala AC. So Neil 
won the under 20 indoor national championships from Jack Kelly in second place but Nathan Sheehy Kremen has had an unbelievable indoor season from Emerald AC 150-60 So they're looking to go through in 53 seconds. Keelan Kilrahel is going to try and take them through in 53. I'm going to nearly suggest that would be a PB for Keelan. So where we go, men's B800 meters. Fully expect this one to be a sub 150. So Neil Culhan from ACC, Finn Wooger from Metro St. Bridget, the two early leaders, and Keelan Kilrahel on the outside has to try and get himself up. These boys are not holding back. Nathan Sheehy Kremen there. So Neil Culhan and Nathan Sheehy Kremen. And now Keelan Kilrahel gets to the belt for 25 seconds through the first 200 metres. No wonder Keelan Kilrahel wasn't with them they're looking to go in 53s and they go through in 25 seconds so now Keelan Kilrahel's in the position that he should be in and then we have Neil Culhan from Ace and then on his shoulder Nathan Sheehy Kremen and then Owen Quinn from Mullingar Harriers wearing the DCU singlet just on the outside of them Finn Woodger's right there and then Oshin Kelly from Cranford but they're all bunched together they go through it's slowed down 54 seconds at the bell so it looks to be a little bit more tactical now. Nathan Sheehy Kremen from Owen Quinn from Neil Culhan. And then Oshin Kelly from Cranford. Finn Wooger. Fergal O'Hare. But there's nothing between the whole nine of them here. So somebody's going to make a move very, very soon. Look how bunched up the are. Neil Culhan looks as though he's totally bunched up there. He can't get out. And now from Rath Oath, from nowhere, Peter Kilgallen has taken it on. Bronze in the National Senior Indoor, Peter Kilgallen. We know that he's well capable of doing it. He's come from nowhere here. And then Finn Wood just trying to come back at him as well. And then Neil Culhan, he got himself a break here. He was nowhere with 2.20 to go. And here comes Neil Culhan. And then Jack Kelly is coming fast after him as well. <coughs> These two have had some races. And Jack Kelly gets up to get that from Neil Culhan. 150.56. That race had everything. Nobody had an inch with 200 metres to go. They all had to jockey for position to get themselves out and get into position. Neil Culhan was totally gone with 220 to go. Somehow got himself out and around and made a kick. But Jack Kelly timed it to perfection. 150.56. So that's another massive PB for him. It'll be another PB for Neil Culhan, who ran his PB here last year. Right, so now into the A men's 800 metres. We've had some races here over the years. We've had Andrew Cosgren run, run, run 146, Roland Surlis 146, Harry Purcell 146. Pacemaker is asked to go through in 52 here. So the athletes, two coached by Joe Ryan or Rob Hewson and Jake Bagg. And then we've Angus Harrington from Blackheath and Bromley. Archie Davis from England. We have Thomas Randolph, also from England, coached by Craig Winrow. David Locke from England. Ethan Hussey from Leeds. Rocco Zaman Brown. Roland Surlis from Cander Track Club. And Ruben Monreal from um, Spain.
So folks, this is going to be pretty fast. I'll let that do. Give you a bit of a feeling of who we have in here. Archie Davis is wearing 268 and he's a PB of 144 to 72. Thomas Randolph is wearing 269. He's a PB of 144.98, third in the Euro Under 23 Championships in 2021. You've David Lock from England in there, a PB of 146. Similar Ethan Pussy from Leeds is wearing 271. 146 of a PB, Silver in the World Juniors Under 20s in 2022 last year. He won the 1500 meters here last year. And he has a hand time of 146 days from April. So we know he's in pretty good shape. Don't forget, a lot of these athletes, this is their first race of the season, so we're not sure what shape they're in, but we certainly know what they're capable of. You've rolled in service in there with two. So Pacemaker's been asked to go through 51.52. Some of these athletes have 144 PBs. A lot of them 146s, so can we get a 145 here? We've had 146 for the last two years. Angus Harrington from Blackheath and Bromley has a 148 PB coming in here, 149 season seven from indoors. He's wearing 267. And Jake Beck from Ferry Bank, coached by Joe Ryan, wearing 266. 148 is his PB. Robert Houston wearing 266. So only a couple of Irish in this, Roland Serlis, in the candor, in the black, will be right with the leaders. He tends to like to go hard with them until 600 and hang on. And then on the inside, the two other Irish athletes, Rob Houston and Jake Bagg from Kildare AC and Ferrybank. But look out for Archie, Archie Davis, 144.72 in lane three. And then in lane four, look out for Thomas Randolph in the light blue, 144.98. And then the world junior silver medalist last year with a 146.61 right in lane six is Ethan Hussey from Leeds. Ruben Morel, we're about to get this man's 800 metres underway. As I always say, when the athletes up for Okay, so hopefully we get fireworks here up the home straight. So it looks like a pacemaker was slow to get away there. Didn't look as though he was overly ready, but he's gone out and he will be the leader when they break in. So 51 52. Be nice if he could go a little bit longer than 400, but we'll wait and see. So if we look then, we have Rocco Zaman Brown and Ethan Hussey. And then Roland Surlis right there. So pacemaker slows it down 24 25, 25 seconds for the. Chasing group, which is Ethan Hussey from Leeds, is leading them out. Roland Serlis then in behind him. And then Rocco Zaman Brown. So up the home straight. They're going to go through. It's going to be well outside 51 52. They go through the bell, bang on 52 point. So it's Ethan Hussey. Leads them out. Roland Serlis in second place. And then Rocco Zaman Brown then in third. And then Thomas Randolph in behind them. Then Archie Davis. So down the back straight now. 250 to go. Roland Serlis still sitting on the shoulder of Ethan Hussey. But they're all ganging up in behind. They're through 119. So it's not going to be overly fast. It's going to be maybe a 147 here, but it's still Ethan Hussey. From Roland Serlis. And then look at this. Archie Davis 
coming around on the outside here. So into the home straight. We have Ethan Hussey. Is he going to be able to hold on? It's Archie Davis coming back at him. But Ethan Hussey's controlled this and finished it from Archie Davis. And then Ar Angus Harrington in behind him. So 146.18. Oh my goodness, that was a 25 second or 26 second last 200 metres. So the world junior silver medalist won the Belfast Milers 1500 metres last year. Takes the 800 metres this year in 146.18. But we thought it could have been anyone's up that home straight. But he actually totally controlled that race when you think about it. Ethan Hussey was in control at the bell. Pacemaker moved away. Down the back straight, he just controlled it and controlled it. And with 200 metres, they were all closing in on him. And then he just moved away up the home straight when he had to. So straight from the 800s now, it's hard to think that we'd seven or eight 800s there. We go to the women's 3,000 metres. And the men, A800. 3K women is about to come off, followed by the 3K men, and then the women's A. We're here with Ethan Hussey, winner of the men's 800 meter A race. Congratulations, Ethan. Cheers, thank you very much. Yeah, you had a, a win here last year in the 15. You've come back over and made it a win in the eight. Yeah, you know, it's a great track. I found that out last year. It's a great meeting, and it's just good to start the season off. Um, had a couple of races. We're getting into the groove a little bit, but yeah, season's only just starting, so it's nice to come out here, a little trip across the water, and take a win. And what will be the distance you'll be focusing on this year? Um, no focus. 800, 1500, you know. I've proved myself over the 15 and the 8. It's just about getting quicker with both distances. And yeah, I mean, 1500 nowadays is a, it's an event where you've got to either be, be able to do a good 5k or a good 800. I can do a good 800, I can also do a good 1500. So yeah, set me up for good stead. Very good. And when will your next race be, do you think? Uh, next weekend, yeah. Uh, the Continental Gold Tour out in Bermuda. Uh, Starting off with a 1500 there, so yeah, be interesting to see what I can do. Excellent, thanks very much. No Thank you very much.
So we move to our women's 3,000 meters. That beach, um, what have we got here? Yeah, so women's 3,000 meters. The David McGill Family Cup at stake here. And then we have the men's 3,000 metres and then the women's <laughs> A800. And that will wrap up what has been a fantastic day's athletics. Still three brilliant races to go. So big field here, 18 athletes entered. So a lot of our, again, our younger athletes in this 3,000 meters, and then a lot of our more experienced athletes like Cheryl Nolan, Nikita Burke, Nadine Dunnigan, Aoife Quill. So the old and the new, and I'm calling some of these old, and they're only about 23, 24. But still youths and juniors in Anna Gardner and Rosha Roberts is into her first year as an under-23. Avril Millerick still in, uh, in under-20. Claudia Gilley ran 9.51 or 9.52 down the double graded meeting, only under-18. So away we go, seven and a half laps, women's 3,000 metres. So Neve Carr is going to take them through in 75s. So, pacemaker looking for probably around 9.20. So now they break in. So Neve Carr is going to take them out. Neve Carney from Rahini, the early leader, Nikita Burke. So it'll take a while for a bit of a gap to start forming with the athletes, but Neve Carney had a, another great season indoors. So she leads them out. Nikita Burke, 9.22 PB. And then Nadine Dunnigan just tucked in behind her. So if we can churn out the 74, 75s, and then... Anything can happen in the last couple of laps. We could hopefully be sub 920. So 73 seconds through the first 400 metres. And it's Neve Kearney from Rohini Shamrock. Nikita Burke. Letter Kenny, Nadine Dunnigan, Tullamore Harriers. So it's photo finish. We were wondering at the men's B race. And we're going to do the presentation to them also. Now Cheryl so Nolan then in about fifth or sixth place. So Fiona Q there as well. Well there's still Carlton nobody Saint out of it yet. And still six laps to go. So Rosha Roberts in the famous colours of North Belfast Harriers just on the inside about mid-table. Saw Keen Kelly win his 1500 earlier on. Cheryl Nolan in the St. Abbans colours in about sixth place. So 231. So that one slowed a little bit. That was a 77 or so. Still Neve Kearney, Nikita Burke, 
No change. Nadine Dunnigan. So guys, we make our way. Where is Ethan? We're just waiting for Ethan. Can he come back to us? I'll come back to that presentation in the meantime. A few more. Lauren Dermody from Castle Comer is wearing 136. 137 is Kathy Hayde from Ross Cheryl County. Nolan there. From Lucan Harriers is wearing 138. And then 139 is 146. Rose from North Belfast Harriers. Just don't have her name there. I think that could be. If you want to kill, is there? Catherine Martin just Admiral at the back Nelly of that group there. Your AC is wearing 140. 141 is Catherine Martin from C City of Lisbon. 142 is Hannah Kill from Kilkenny City Harriers. So down the back straight. The third time coming up to 1200 meters. Because we do have our men for our 800 meters presentation. So probably a, a 75 there. So we're probably still on the sub 930. A pretty even pace. So I suppose. 75 is the average now. And Neve Kearney has continued to dominate this. Just controlling the field in behind her, just sitting in behind the pacemaker. So we just have our medal presentation at the moment for the men's 800 metres. And Angus Harrington from Blackheath and Bromley was third in 146.98. Thomas Randolph from England was second in 146.83. And then with a time of 146.18, the champion, very impressive, from Leeds, Ethan Hussey. So we can just see, Our just off that leading group, we have um, Clodagh Gill, only under 18. 9.51 she has for a 3,000. I'm getting a bit tired now, guys. Lauren Dermody is wearing 136. Ethan Coffey, 138. Hannah Kill, 142. Fiona Everett's 146. So now it's Cheryl Nolan that's taken it on, just tucked in behind the pacemaker. So Nikita Burke and Cheryl Nolan. Neve Kearney. So two of our under-20 athletes, both under-19 in Avril Millerick and Anna Gardner. And Anna coached by the East End YouTube cameraman today, Peter Morgan. So there's Cody Gill just in the back of that group. So an under-18, two under-19s, and then our senior athletes at the front. So it's Nikita Burke and Cheryl Nolan. Eight girls there heading out. This is turning into, turning into an exciting race. So 6.23 at 2,000 metres. So just over 9.30, but you would expect it to pick up so in the last 600 or so. We get a presentation for the men's B when this race finishes because our ladies turning into the home straight now. They've got 900 meters to go, and this is a race on, guys, because what we've got eight girls still in there. So Cheryl Nolan on the inside. Cheryl Nolan now has taken it on. From Fiona Everett after moving her way up. So Cheryl Nolan, Fiona Everard, Nikita Burke, Nadine Dunnigan, and then our young pretenders, Avril Millerick, Clodagh Gill, and Anna Gardner. We're chopping and changing that, the podium positions as our ladies head out. So now Cheryl Nolan, they're beginning to get a little bit stretched. So Cheryl Nolan from Fiona Everard, Nikita Burke, Nadine Dunnigan, Clodagh Gill, Anna Gardner, and Avril Millerick. And then Hannah Kyo leads out the next group. There, 
So 600 metres to go, 740. And it just looks like it's Cody Gill, the under 18 athlete, that's been able to stay with the four senior athletes. So it's Cheryl Nolan will lead them into the home straight for the penultimate time. Fiona Everard is sat on her shoulder the whole time. Nikita Burke then in third. Nadine Dunnigan four. Cody Gill five. Then Anna Gardner six. And Avril Millerick seven. And now Fiona Everard just moves out wide. So will she try and take it on or will she sit? She had a great cross country season. Cheryl Nolan, a good indoor season. So Cheryl Nolan gets the bell, 8.18. So we need to be a 71 to be sub 9.30. So it's Cheryl Nolan from Fiona Everard, from Nikita Burke. Clody Gill now moves into four, the head of Nadine Dunnigan. Anna Gardner is in six, Avril Millerick seven. And now Cheryl Nolan's kicked for home. She's opened up a few metres over Fiona Everard, Nikita Burke and Clody Gill. So she tried to go, opened up that little bit of a gap, but she hasn't opened it too much. She's about five metres clear, 2.50 to go. So Cheryl Nolan from St. Abans, 200 metres to go, 8.53. Fiona Everard and Nikita Burke look to be battling it out for second and third with Clodagh Gill, four, but this is very impressive here by Cheryl Nolan. She sat just in for a while, then she took it on, controlled the pace and has run away from the field in this last lap. So Cheryl Nolan from St. Abans, Nikita Burke moves into second place, Fiona Everard, three. It's going to be a massive, massive PB for Clodagh Gill, Nadine Dunnigan. So it's going to be 9.25.81 for Cheryl Nolan. What a run by Clodagh Gill, under 18. She's probably a 9.33, 9.34. Anna Gardner's battling up here. She's going to be in the low 9.40s, I'd say. Another great run by Avril Millerick. Anna Kyo, very good run there for Kilkenny City Harriers. So all these athletes still well top, sub 10 minutes. Catherine Martin from City of Lisbon comes across the line. So 9.25.81 and loads of running and Cheryl Nolan left. She totally controlled that race. Two races left and two brilliant races in prospect. The men's A 3,000 metres, followed by the women's A 800 metres. Andrew Cosgren, Callum Morgan, Alexander Vicek, Owen Everard, Nick Griggs, Hiko Tenosa, Mark Pierce from the UK, and then James West. Coached by Helen Clitheroe is a 7.43 PB. So, great, great race and prospect. So, the athletes are over at the start line. Two races to go. So well done to Eamon Christie and the whole team for a very successful Belfast Irish Milers. Main sponsor, TripAdvisor, but so many sponsors here helping out to be able to put on a great show.
Catherine Kay. My understanding is that Thomas Dagger Pacer has been asked to go through in 61, 62s with a view to this being a 742-ish um, finish. There's only two or three athletes that are going to be able to go with that pace. Um, so the pace, the pace set is gone out for 61, 62s. So we're looking for around 7.40. Okay, they're lined up. Big field. 17 athletes. So the Beachmont Harriers men's 3,000 metres about to get underway. And they're away. Okay, folks, the men's... So Thomas Dodd has the job of taking them through in 61-62. So we can see him just making his way to the lead there. Nick Griggs. All these boys seem to have gone away warm weather training at the same haircut this now. This is going to be a super race. As I said, we're looking for a pace of 61-62. James West from England, coached by Helen Clitheroe, is a 7.43 PB. So it's Alexander Wojciech from Poland. So he's a is the one that's going after the pacemaker. And then in the black on the outside, Andrew Coskerin. In the blue right in the inside, we have Nick Griggs. And Andrew Coskerin has decided, I'm not letting any gap form here. He's also looking for a good race here. He's second over there, maybe third. I think that's in the third. In second in the race. So Andrew Coskran, a 333-1500 metre athlete. Super athlete. 7.53 for 3K. He knows he's a lot faster than that. So they go through. That was a bit slow, that one. That was like a 64 second, which is not what they wanted. Now the field is well strung out, as you'd expect. So you know, a lot of the athletes the whole way down will be checking their own watches because the pacemaker will need to up it a little bit. So Alexander Vajcek, Andrew Koskren, James West, Mark Pierce. So they were about 135, 136. They need to pick this up a little bit. It's not the pace that we wanted. So the pacemaker looks over his shoulder. You see that Thomas Vajcek is there and Andrew Koskarin is tucked in behind him. So we get the 800 meter split. So through in 2-6. So 63s. So we're in the high 740s. So Koskarin is going to come up onto the shoulder of the pacemaker. I'd say he's going to ask him to push it on. He believes he's in the low 740 shape. So Koskren moves up to the inside of the pacemaker. James West in second place. Alexander Vajcek third. Mark Pierce, then Will Battersill, then Nick Griggs, and they're just beginning to move away. Callum Morgan and Owen Everard in that next group. As is Neil Johnson from Andale Striders. So there were 206 at 800. We'll want this at 307 at least. We want the pace to pick up, but it looks as though it has picked up a bit now because they're getting well strung out here. And Andrew Coskerin tracking the pacemaker. So they go through 1200. That one's a 307, a 308. So they're back to a 61. That's exactly what we wanted. So it's Andrew Coskerin, James West, and they're beginning to pull away from a group of four in behind. Alexander Vajcek, Will Battersill, Mark Pierce, Nick Griggs. But Coskerin's telling him, come on, come on. So he's going to drop out here. So the pacemaker has gone at a very early stage here. A long, long way for home. A solo effort needed by Andrew Coskerin here. That's not what he needed. Less than halfway and the pacemaker's gone. James West in second place. And then the battle looks to be for third. Coskerin powers on. So we were 3.07 at 1,200. 
So Karlsgren comes up to 1600 and he's done that in a 61 as well 408 and he's moving away from the field James West is in second place and then we've Mark Pierce, Will Battersill, Nick Griggs and Alexander Vicek and then Neil Johnson then takes the lead in the chasing group then in the third group but Koskren long long way to go he'll come down and he'll see he still has three laps to go He'll look at this just as a time trial. He churns them out day in, day out. So Andrew Coskin, three laps to go. James West in second place. Then we have Mark Pierce by Mark Vicek. And then Nick Griggs, followed in then by Will Battersill. Then Neil Johnson, Callum Morgan. But the lead probably 40 metres now. So this is very, very impressive solo running by Andrew Coskren through 2000 and he's in 5.859 that's a 60 second lap so he's really bringing the times back here 5.15 then so he's about 7 8 seconds clear so he comes round into the home straight 900 metres to go he's absolutely powering on here he looks over his left shoulder he sees 50 metres over James West in second place he looks so, so comfortable here. He gets a well-deserved round of applause. This bit of solar running. 800 metres to go. 540 with 800 metres to go. In second place, James West. He may be caught soon by Mark Pierce, Will Battersill, Nick Griggs and Alexander Vicek. They have about 30 metres to get on him. 700 metres to go. The lead's probably 60, 70 metres at this stage. Andrew Coskren, star of the sea athlete. Trains with Dublin Track Club. He's probably 70 metres clear. He's dropped that one to probably a 62. The chase and pack are going to catch James West very, very soon. With 600 metres probably to go. But it's all about Andrew Coskren here. This is a really, really impressive early season show of form for him. And he looks over his shoulder. He sees 80 metres now at this stage. Mark Pierce now is just going to come onto the shoulder of James West with Nick Griggs. Will Battersill and Alexander Vicek. Well, that's the battle for second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. It's all about Andrew Koskren. His stride is getting a little bit shorter here. But he sees the bell at 6.43. He's going to try and come home sub 7.45 here. But he is tired. This is really, really tough running to run five laps nearly on your own. And then the race is in behind. Nick Griggs comes onto the shoulder of Mark Pierce. Will Battersill then onto the shoulder of Griggs. On the inside, James West is getting a bit of a reprieve and Alexander Vicek is tucked in behind them. And they're probably closing ever so slightly on Andrew Coskren, but that lead is so big that it makes no difference. So just over 200 metres to go. He's at 7.16. He needs to come home in 30 or 29 to be 7.45. It's a very, very tired looking Andrew Coskren. And the boys are flying Griggs. And Pierce are battling it out in behind, it looks like. So it's going to be, they're going to close significantly, Andrew Coskin. He looks over his shoulder. The gap's down to probably about 40 metres now. Well, this has really hurt him the last couple of laps. He's had to do so much on his own. But the battle in behind, look at this. Nick Griggs is going to be a 1 2 for Ireland here. Will Battersill in third. Oh, and look at this for James West. has come back so struggling. <coughs> James West, we thought he was gone, but I think he got up maybe for third. But Andrew Coskin, 750.87. That just shows how hard that last lap was from there. It was a 65-66 last lap. But he had to do it all on his own. Looks like Nick Griggs got second. James West may have got up from third from Will Battersill, four. So it's coming across the line, some of our under-20 athletes. Jack Fenlon from St. Abans just comes across the line. Harry Colbert. So Owen McElhenney from Bantry finishes a brilliant men's 3,000 metres. No doubt about who controlled and dictated that race. I'd say that last 600 hurt as bad as he's hurt in any other race. He could see that they were closing and closing, but the gap was just way too much. But the battle for second, third and fourth was unbelievable. So 
bodies everywhere on the track there. So there's no doubt Cosgren will be disappointed with that. He had nobody to carry him around. He ran 1,800 of it, maybe 1,600 of it on his own. So we now have the medal presentation for that women's 3,000 metres. And in third place was Fiona Everett from Bandon AC with 9.29.29. Nikita Burke from Letterkenny, AC was second in 9.28.27. And the winner was Cheryl Nolan from St. Abbans. Very impressive, 9.25.81. So the McGill Cup being presented to Cheryl Nolan. So what? A race we had there in the Beachman Harriers men's 3,000 metres. So one race to go. Women's 800 metres. So we're getting ready for our final event of what was a brilliant day's racing here on the brilliant Mary Peters track. Here with Nick Griggs, just after running the Louise Shanahan there, at just the in lane two, two chatting to Michael McGovern. Sir. Nick, you were closing fast down that home stretch. Do you want to just talk us through the race, how you planned it out? Yeah, it was probably well going off really quick, 61s or 2s, but I got my through the lap in 64 maybe, so didn't, have go didn't end up going that quick. Yeah, um, felt all right. I felt like it was quick, which isn't great, but I think it closed relatively fast. I don't know if it came second or third. I think I might have got dipped in the line for third, but felt all right the last lap. Uh, sniper was starting to hit me a bit down the home strip, but yeah, overall, not bad, not great, just nice to open the season. And what was the plan? I mean, was the plan a sub-750 performance? You, you, you don't sound overly content with that, but I mean, you're, you're just probably looking to push on. Yeah, yeah that was definitely a plan, but again, just didn't come out today, you know, it went off a bit too slow and then there was a gap. Uh, Andrew, Andy Coskin and uh, James West opened up a wee gap and no one really went. So I thought I'm just going to sit here. I don't want to like uh, kill myself going in like, or absolutely rack myself trying to chase them. So I thought, yeah, I'll just sit. And then James West kind of came back to us. So, That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll just cut back up to the commentary. So Neil McCartan just interviewing Nick Griggs there as he gets himself back onto the track for our final event today, the women's 800 metres. And will we have the fireworks we've had in the last couple of years? They're called to their marks. So where we go. So Louise Shanahan in lane five. So the pacemakers somewhere around 58 seconds. Jenna Bramble on the inside. And here's our pacemaker Priscilla Van Orschot making her way across. So 28 seconds to the first 200 metres. That's fast. Will it stay that way? So the feel already strong out here. 42 seconds through the first 300 metres. This is very, very fast. So Kira McGeehan just sitting in third place there. Isabel Boffy leading them out. Jenna Bramel, Louise Shanahan. So 57, 48. Oh my goodness, this is fast. So our pacemaker moves away. Isabel Boffy. Kira McGeehan, Louise Shanahan, Jenna Bromwell. Kira McGeehan is the one that's going up behind her on her back. 
So we're at about 113 through 500 metres. Let's get this 600 metre split here. They couldn't do it again on us here, could they? They're through 600 metres in 127, 128. So Kieran McGee sitting on the shoulder of Isabel Boffey. Louise Shanahan, she loves to come late here. We know the sprint finish she had now. Kieran McGee starts to make her kick. Louise Shanahan has tracked her. <coughs> Into the home straight, Isabel Boffey. Kira McGean, Louise Shanahan. It's Shanahan and McGean. And then Shanahan, as she's done before, is kicked on. She's going to get it. Isabel Ives from Great Britain's coming very late. But Louise Shanahan's going to take it from Ives, from Buffy, from McGean. 159.50. Just outside our national record. So 159.42 last year. She runs a 159.50. Has anyone else run sub two minutes here? So some lightning fast times on the track today. We finish off with a 159.50 from Louise Shannon. She timed her run to perfection. She tracked and tracked Kira McGeehan. But McGeehan then looked as though she was beaten. Ives came up, but Shanahan, She's become Ireland's top 800 metre runner in the last two years. There is no doubt about it. You guys on the fast track here and the international athletes love it. You're getting a great name. So what a finish to a brilliant day's athletics here at the Belfast Irish Milers Club in association with TripAdvisor. Thanks to everybody for watching in. For everybody for coming and supporting us to Eamon Christie and the team to my East End YouTube colleagues here we've had plenty of fun events together and today was as good as any of them so thanks again well done everyone We're here with Andrew Koskren, winner of the men's 3,000 metre A race. Andrew, great running. Sub 7.50, we believe you clocked? Yeah, I've, I think I'm still waiting for the official exact time. So, yeah, um, but yeah, it was a good run. Like, I suppose it, was a, it wasn't really a, like we were going for the time. So it was, it was good to get the win, I think. That was the main aim today, and, and that was good to get it. Yeah. Absolutely, and y you look like you're running from, from the front for a large portion of the race after halfway. Maybe you, it was sort of a long run from home. Yeah, I think, I think there was kind of like on the first lap, uh, there was a Polish guy, I don't know his name, um, but he kind of he went with the pace, and, and then the rest of <laughs> rest of us were kind of all dropping off, and I was at the back, so I had to make a move to catch up with him, and then and then I was on the back, and then you kind of get the feeling that no one's really up for it, so uh, then he started to drop off. I went around him, and then I think uh, James West was on me then, and then as soon as the pacer dropped up, I was like, ah, I made I just made the decision. <laughs> Just, you know, it's a tactical move, you know, you gotta wait till the end or you go early and I felt the strength was there so I just went early and, and I was able to drop everybody else. Like, 
Very good. And obviously the, the race was sort of set up for a bit of 7.42 clocking. So it was sort of trying to get into that sort of low 7.40s, high 7.30 range. Um, well, I think I don't think that was our fault, really. I think maybe the pacing uh, wasn't I don't honest. I, like he did, a, he did an all right job. Like he did a grand job, um, but he kind of ran in lay, outside lane one, and I don't, I don't really know what okay, happened. Okay, no, fair enough. Really happened there, fair enough. Fair he enough. Was one in front of us, which is the okay, which is okay. the pacing job. So that was a bit weird, but yeah, that kind of made it a bit more difficult. Great. And then obviously, I mean, the the, the world champ standard is in the bag. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you have no stress over the summer to go and chase standards. Um, but you probably will be racing around the European circuit then. So any races coming up? Yeah, so I have I have three races yeah, lined up for uh, for June so far. Uh, well, I'm, I'm waiting to be confirmed for one. Uh, Hengelo is the first one. Then I'm going to run in Bidgosh. And then either uh, Houston or Celestia. Either, either one of those. So there's three, three races. Um, and then I'll go back to train for a bit. And then, and then the Olympic window opens up in the 1st of July. So it's, it's aimed for one big race in July. And try and knock that out of the... Not that Get it over with early. early. Uh, it's yeah, yeah, exactly. Try try to run. Uh, at th is it three forty three thirty four point two? I think. That's right. Yeah, um, yeah. So try to get under that. I've already done it once for the world, so I should be able to do it again in the right race. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. So all eyes on August then, really. Um, everything's just building up towards that world champ. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, as I said to you before, he interviewed me there a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and I was facing one of the younger lads, Jonas. World final. That's the. That's the goal. That's the aim. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very good. Thanks very much for that, Andrew. Uh, we'll just go back up to the commentary team then. Louise Shanahan, winner of the women's 800 meter A race at the Belfast Irish Milers meeting association with TripAdvisor. Louise, great race, just completely off the front. It was coming down the home straight there. I mean, no one really knew who was going to take it. Yeah, I think um, when I got to 600 and I felt strong, I was pretty confident, but I wasn't sure the gaps were going to open and I definitely kind of had to check my stride with 100 to go. But yeah, I have a good kick and I believed in myself. So I thought I could make it to that finish line first with 100 to go and thankfully I did. 
Very good. And Belfast seems to be a great place for you. You were here last year, new Irish record. I think you've ran 159.5 today. Yeah. That's yet to be confirmed. So another sub two clocking. Um, you know, w w where do you go from here? Uh, hopefully sub 159. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think um, it's a great start to the season. You know, this is essentially my season opener and to tick off the world standard uh, is, is great, a huge pressure off. Uh, the big thing this year is to qualify for Paris. So I think that standard is 159.3. So hopefully I can find another 0.2 of a second in two months time. So but just yeah, we'll see. looking to get that uh, Paris standard out of the way early enough. Um, so, I mean, wh where does the, the racing schedule take you from here then? Uh, I think I'm racing in France in two weeks time, but yeah, we'll see. Um, you know, it's a great time to have early season, but it's all about the end of the season this year. So I wouldn't be surprised if my coach said that's great, but back to training now. So Very good, very good. And you've been busy enough at, uh, at college and whatnot, so it's, it's, it's a busy lifestyle. Uh, yeah, I'm a full-time PhD student, so yeah, I'm submitting in December, so I think I've got a rough few months ahead of me with that. But yeah, I enjoy doing both. It gives me a great group to train with as well. Very good. That was Louise Shanahan, winner of the women's 800 metre A race. Thank you very much, Louise. Thank you. Thank you. Eamon Christie, the director of the Belfast Irish Milers Meet in association with TripAdvisor. Eamon, a fantastic day. The weather's even been great for you as well. The amount, the amount of quality race we've seen today has been, once again, lived up to the, the expectations of the meet. Absolutely unbelievable, Neil. I mean, the weather gods just seem to look down on me every year. <coughs> And it just adds to great races here. You know, that women's 800, phenomenal. The men's 3K, uh, you know, Andrew took it off the, the, the gun and died a wee bit uh, coming up the home straight, but absolutely fabulous. Great men's 400, great women's 400, great men and women's 200, the men's 100 metres. It was unfortunate that Israel took sick last night and wasn't able to compete. But every single race, from an A race to a D race, phenomenal. And, you know, just have to take this opportunity to thank TripAdvisor because without them and all the other race sponsors, this meet just wouldn't happen. And, I mean, it's it's testament to the meeting that the amount of athletes, the quality of athletes uh, come up. And it's testament that a, a seven times world snooker champion flies in just to spectate at this meet. Unbelievable. And just when you said, I mean, the, the, the events went from strength to strength every year. I mean, last year, an Irish record set in the 800. Louise comes right back again, wins in 159.5. So, again, under two minutes. Um, I mean, the, the, the meat just it just seems to be getting bigger. Yeah, and I've just heard that the young girl, uh, Abby Ives, has set a PB. She broke two minutes for the first time. So, unreal. It, it made her uh, worthwhile coming over to Belfast. And, uh, you know, it's just, just great. And it's great to have TripAdvisor back for next year, which is uh, absolutely great. I can start working on maybe Wednesday for next year's meet. <laughs> Very good. That was Eamon Christie, the director of the Belfast Irish Milers meet in association with TripAdvisor. Thanks very much, Eamon. Thank you very much, Neil. Thank you.
of Buffy, winner or sorry, third in the Belfast Irish Milers meet in association with TripAdvisor. Isabel, a great run. Thank you. Yeah, it was good. I'm not usually a lead out kind of girl, but you know, I felt good today, so I went for it, and I'm happy I did. Very good, and I mean, it was a great field of athletes. I mean, t to help you push on, obviously. Um, clearly, I mean, the, the goal this season is to try and get that world standard. Yeah, definitely. You know, I went for it today, just fell a bit short, but like overall, it's a season opener, so I'm happy with it, and I know I can get that time. Very good, and it was great to have you actually over in Belfast here today. The sun seems to always be out shining every year, so hopefully, I mean, you'll have plans to come back next year, surely? Oh yeah, absolutely. Like um, the weather was amazing, which made this great, and like. We just got such a good group of girls together and um, it was such a great race, so yeah, I'll definitely be back. And just on this season then, I mean, where, where does your, your next race take you to? Um, I'm off to Redingen next, in two weeks' time, two Saturdays' time, uh, which should be a good race, so I'm looking forward to it. Very good. That was Isabel Boffy, third in today's Belfast Irish Milers Women's A Race. Thank you, Isabel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.